No. So. All right. Good morning. Today is Thursday, July 27th. This is the time and place set for the regularly scheduled Nevada Gaming Commission meeting for the month of July. If you would please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Has our agenda been posted in accordance with the open meeting law? Yes, it has. All right, at this time, I would like to remind anyone that's uh, coming to the podium to speak that we ask that you speak directly into the microphone and speak as clearly as possible as this meeting is being tr uh, transmitted electronically and being transcribed. Madam Secretary, if you could proceed with our first agenda item, public comments. This item is placed on the agenda to give the public an opportunity to comment on gaming related matters. Okay, anyone uh, wishing to address the commission may do so at this time. Matters brought to our attention during the public comment cannot be acted upon, but we're happy to hear comments of the public as well as from my fellow commissioners. Um, comments will be limited to three minutes as a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction. If any of my fellow commissioners or myself ask any questions of the public, the time needed to address those questions will not be held against those time constraints. If you have any handouts or copies of comments to provide, please do not approach the dais with, your, with them. An enforcement agent will come to grab them from you. Um, here in Carson City, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? All right, uh, it appears that there's no one present wishing to make a public comment. Uh, at this time, we will go to Las Vegas. Good morning. Hi, uh, good morning. <clears throat> Diamante Asbury, D-I-A-M-A-N-T-E-A-S-B-E-R-R-Y, here on behalf of the Culinary Union. Um, employee benefits are vital to the everyday life of gaming workers and their families, and a holder of a Nevada gaming license should not discriminate against employees when it comes to benefits. We've previously spoken to you about how Station Casinos discriminates against employees by denying benefits to some while providing benefits to others. Last December, the Culinary Union agreed as the elected representative for a bargaining unit of workers that Station Casinos should give a new set of enhanced benefits to all represented workers at Sunset Station, Green Valley Ranch, and Red Rock Casino. But the company still has not done the right thing, and has just given those new benefits to non-union workers. Under Station's enhanced benefits, which went into effect of January, uh, January of this year, full-time team members who have worked for the company for at least six months are eligible for up to six weeks of paid time off following the birth or adoption of a child. But the catch is you don't qualify for the benefit if you're in a job that's represented by the union. Right now, there is a hostess cashier from the Lucky Penny at Red Rock who was denied the six-week paid parental leave she applied for in April. She has worked for the company for eight years. She's currently at home with her newborn baby on an unpaid leave from work through FMLA. In May, the company refused to give her paid leave to care for her child, which has caused her avoidable financial stress. And her story is not unique. Workers across different station casinos properties have been denied enhanced benefits this year due to their union status. We are once again asking you to tell station casinos to respect workers and provide enhanced benefits without discrimination. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else present in Las Vegas wishing <clears throat> to make public comment? <clears throat> Sir, could you yes, please state your name? Uh, my name is my name is Cassiano Corpus. And uh, can you spell it? Uh, C A S I A N O C O R P U S. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cassiano Corpus, and I have worked at Palace Station as a as a casino porter for 31 years. I am a union committee leader inside Palace Station, which means I talk to my coworkers and or organize them to fight for union contract. The reason I became a union committee leader was <clears throat> so that I could provide a better life and the future for my family. I want to have a better pay, a pension, and a better insurance. Station Casinos does not want to give us what we are asking for. Every day I go to work, I am afraid because I don't know which, which day might be my last day. We only want Station Casinos to respect the daily struggle of us employees and to sit with us in the, in the negotiating table and sign a union contract. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else present in Las Vegas that wishes to make public comment? It appears that there is not. Uh, that will close our public comment section. 
Madam Secretary, the next item on our agenda is the approval of the prior month's disposition. Pursuant to NRS 241.035, this item is the consideration of the approval of the Nevada Gaming Commission disposition for June 2023. All right, each of us has had the opportunity to review the disposition. There's no questions or comments. I think it's in proper form for a motion. Chair, I move for approval of the prior month's disposition. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 And it appears there are uh, none opposed. Madam Secretary, if you could please read in res the restricted consent items. Your items on the restricted consent agenda this morning are items six, seven, and 10. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions, comments, or discussion? I have on... some disclosures to make. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. For it's item six, seven, and 10, correct? Yes. Non restricted? No. No restricted. I have no disclosures to make. Okay. All right. Uh, any of any questions, comments? All right. There being none, it appears uh, that it's in proper form for a motion. I have a, uh, oh. Okay. I have a disclosure as well. Oh, yeah. So I have one disclosure as well with regards to unrestricted item number two. We're unrestricted. Okay. Unrestricted. I would put table it. Sorry. I yeah, sure. Okay. That's fine. That's okay. So we're uh, so on. Uh, restricted consent items six, seven, and ten. Um, does anyone have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar for the restricted items. Any discussion on the motion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Madam Secretary, if you could please read in the new game consent item. Your item on the new game consent agenda this morning is item number one. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for mm -hmm. approval. Okay. Um, this was placed on the consent um, agenda. We have a lot of information on this game that was provided to us. And so I felt that it would be appropriate to simply have any discussion um, on the consent agenda. So does anyone have any comments, questions? No. Just a comment. I, I agree that it, it's absolutely appropriate to place on the consent calendar, but watching the individual present, um, creating a new game, winning an award, you know, good on him and, uh, you know, congratulations to him. But with that, I'm, I'm happy to make a motion to approve uh, that agenda item to be consented to. All right, uh, any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed, thank you. All right. We now uh, move to non-restricted items held up for discussion. Madam Secretary, if you could read out non-restricted number one. Non-restricted number one are the applications of Bowtie Hospitality LV LLC, Bowtie Hospitality LLC, Jeffrey Miller Sofer, and Brett Lawrence Muffson for a preliminary finding of suitability. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval. I believe we have a disclosure on this item. We do, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I have a discussion with respect to uh, non-restricted item number one. Uh, for the record, I'm a partner in North Law Group and my firm and I uh, have represented Jeffrey Sofer and various of his entities in prior litigation and related litigation that concluded years ago and then in which I was not substantively involved. Um, I have no pecuniary interest in the item before us and I do not believe that the independence or, ju or judgment of a reasonable person in the situation would be affected by this prior representation and I intend to participate and vote on this matter. Thank you. Morning. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, Frank Schreck, uh, with my colleague Sonia Vermees representing uh, the applicants. Uh, I'd like to introduce those applicants. Jeff Sofer, Brett Muffson, Stacy Michaels is the general counsel for the Fountain of Las Vegas. And behind uh, Stacy is uh, Mike uh, Pappas, who is uh, co-general counsel of uh, Mountain Blue Development. Thank you. Uh, before uh, beginning our very brief presentation, because I talked to the chair and, and we're going to abbreviate it from the presentation we made at the board because you've already seen the record and I most of you watch it on YouTube or some other form. So we won't take your time doing that. I know you have a long meeting today. Uh, but I would like to just barely touch on uh, the fact that uh, uh, I, we disclosed and had disclosed in the past a IRS investigation uh, continuing 
uh, with respect to a, a potential tax issue, which we're not sure if it exists or doesn't exist. Uh, we're cooperating fully with the IRS and in providing all the documents they've asked for. We provide that same set of documents to your agents so they can be uh, continually updated as to where this stands. Uh, outside counsel that's representing Mr. Sof believes that, uh, that this hopefully will be concluded within the next two to three months uh, and that they're fairly optimistic about the outcome of the conclusion. Are there any questions about that? Um, thank you for coming today. Uh, just briefly, I think the issue there, I think the pivotal issue is whether there was intention. Is that really what they're investigating? Is that what they're looking at? Well, they're looking at a, one transaction that's more than a decade old, which was a uh, Mr. Sofer and his sister guaranteed a loan that was utilized in downtown, uh, in town square, uh, town square uh, when everything collapsed. Uh, they repurchased that note. They repurchase it for less than the face value. So the question is, was there any, uh, any, uh, any, uh, <clears throat> uh, any tax liability with respect to, to the savings they made on repurchasing that? We're not sure, with our accountants, whether it was paid or whether it wasn't paid, but that's, we think that's the focus of the investigation. Uh, Mr. Sofer obviously didn't have anything to do with preparing his tax returns. As yeah, and that's, that was my reading. It seemed more like um, the issue was whether they intentionally did something to evade taxes. And I don't, and based on what I have in front of me in the record, that hasn't been borne out yet. So to me, it's just, if you take the advice of your CPA, can't really demonstrate intentionality. So that's really not something that concerns me right now. Yeah. And, and at that time, because of the economic uh, collapse of the real estate uh, market all over. Uh, Mr. Sofer had hundreds of millions of dollars of tax losses that he could have applied against any tax liability. So. And was the obligation uh, uh, for $95 million, was the full amount given as debt for him and his sister? Do you know? I don't know the exact okay. amount. They're just curious. It's not, it's not that important. Yeah, Thank you. I don't know. Uh, with that, I would uh, like to ask uh, Mr. Sofer to approach the podium and, and begin our presentation, unless you have a question. Mr. Sofer, thank you for being here. Just one quick question for sure. Mr. Shrek. Very nice to see you again. Nice thank see you, you, Mr. Blake. All for from a long distance to be with us in cooler Carson City than other places you, you could be today. Um, the Gaming Control Board did a wonderful job talking about the IRS issue, and, and thank you for putting some more substance to it today. But any developments, anything material or something meritorious in the last two weeks that the commission should be aware of. No, I it, because I had suspected there might be a question like that. I talked to this uh, counsel in Washington, D.C., Bob Rosenstein, who used to be an acting attorney general of the United States, and he said there has been no uh, any development since we appeared before the Gaming Control Board. Thank you. That's all. So could I ask uh, Chair, uh, did Mr. Sofer to approach the podium? Please. <laughs> morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, I obviously we made a presentation last time, so I'm sure you have it in the uh, seen the, the uh, book what we presented to the gaming uh, the game the gaming control board. Um, obviously, it's a very it's an honor for me to be here. It's an honor to get this project restarted and finished, which will be hopefully done and we will be done in December. So excited about that! I'm sure you heard about the little fire there. You might have some questions about that. It was uh, just the uh, we don't really know for sure, but there was some some stuff in a buggy on top of the roof, and obviously with the heat, there might have been some chemicals in there left by a construction worker, whatever it caught. It's no major damage. It's very well. It's basically. Um, if you have any questions about the project, I'm happy to answer anything. You, anything. You, and again, it's an honor for me to be back here, and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you get this project finished. Get it finished, not hopefully. So it was. Um just a contained fire on the roof. Just it's got to be fun to open up the paper. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you get calls from hundreds of people saying your building's on fire. Yeah. I said, well, this is a long, crazy story in itself. So, from the time we started this to obviously getting it, you know, buying it back, and obviously finishing it, now that happens. But it, thank God, it was nothing of any substance. So you're still on target for the opening in December, yes. notwithstanding the incident. Yes. 
Yes. You must be so excited to come back full circle with the Genesis story and how long you've been involved in this project. Yeah, it must be it's a very a, proud moment for you. Yeah, it is. It is. And obviously I'm, I'm excited for, for obviously us and obviously for the community and the whole, you know, the state, everybody, because I think it's, a, you know, we are building a fantastic building there. Everyone's going to be proud of it. And it's been sitting there for many years as an eyesore. <laughs> Not by choice, but now it's a beacon of hope. I'm looking forward. It's always, to seeing, it's always better the to second time around. Yeah, so. to completed. No, we're very. I'm very happy for the project to move forward and to be completed. I can't Thank wait you. to see it. Thank you. Um, and then I would like to bring up Brett to ask, you know, give you a little more background on the project. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Um, I don't know if you have the presentation in front of you, but feel free to stop me at any point. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of where we're at today, um, kind of status across the board of our our project. Um, starting on page five, because I'll skip the history as Jeff kind of alluded to, um, our development investment in the in the project was roughly 3.8 billion, and we have roughly 3,600 to 3,800. Uh, Empl uh, employees on site, construction workers. So that's a, that's a uh, <clears throat> a feat in, of, in and of itself to get people in and out of that garage. Uh, of of which there's about 215 million of investment in disadvantaged business is enterprises. So we're proud of that. I just wanted to state that that's on page five. Um, as you go to page six, this talks a little bit about the stats around our our property. Uh, some interesting things for you to read, you know, offline. I don't know if we need to go through here today. Skipping to operations, um, our resort is is basically built uh, in a vertically integrated way. There's three main floors: casino floor, second floor, which is where your retail, spa, fitness, uh, and our entertainment theater, etc. Uh, and the third floor is our pool deck. So it's it all stacks. Um, that's what this shows. And happy to answer any questions as you kind of look through here. Um, going through the, the each component of itself, just note uh, that the casino renderings and the and the status on the right, um, which we're very proud of, I think you'll notice that the renderings and, and the existing conditions are pretty similar, um, which is not an easy feat. So we're proud of, of that um, of that accomplishment. We have 150,000 square foot casino, 1,300 slot machines, and about 128 table games. Um, there's six private gaming salons and a 2,300 square foot outdoor poolside gaming experience. Can I ask you a quick question yes, with respect to the, the three main floors, if you will? Uh, how is uh, public movement between those floors? Is it all through elevators or are there escalators? Elevators and escalators, Both. yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, if skipping to 10, uh, just a little bit about our, our five-star hotel. It is 3,644 total rooms. Uh, which includes 421 <laughs> suites. We have a six acre pool deck featuring seven pool experiences, <laughs> a 56,000 square foot spa and nail salon, uh, and a 14,000 square foot uh, uh, fitness center. Our health and wellness is a large component of our project, so we're, we're excited to showcase that. And on the right, you'll see our, our standard room product. Uh, the <clears throat> This is an example of, of one of our our restaurants, uh, as you can see, it's it's complete on the, the bottom right. Top right is, is a rendering. Uh, we have 36 unique first to market concepts, never been in the Las Vegas market. So we're proud of being able to bring them all here. Uh, there's a about a 50-50 split between fine and casual dining on property. <clears throat> Four of those concepts, by the way, are concepts that we have in Miami and in, in, in the Fountain Blue. Uh, our meeting and conventions, which is located across the street from the LVCVA entrance uh, on the north side, we have 550,000 square feet uh, with many different breakout rooms, 57 meeting breakout rooms, three boardrooms, four ballrooms, 106,000 square foot column spanless um, uh, main ballroom, which I think is the second largest in the market. Uh, entertainment and nightlife on page 13. This is actually an old photo. We're more complete than that, but uh, it's a 35,000 square foot day club, 50,000 square foot nightclub, and we have an arena sized theater stage um, for events and, and, and activations. 
now moving into kind of our culture and the people um, as a from a workforce perspective, we have about 250 people currently employed on staff. Um, resort wide hiring, we need to go from 250 to about 7,100. Mass hiring will start September, October. Um, so we're gearing up for that. Uh, maybe it's missing a little thing here, but keep going to uh, page 16. This just talks a little bit about our culture, which we've really been um, aggressively deploying first starting with from Mount Fountain Blue Miami and what we've created there and trying to bring that into this market so I think our employees are really proud of that it's been extraordinarily receptive so we're proud to uh, to showcase that as we start to hire on uh, those 7100 individuals uh, the benefits program on page 17 again just outlines the details of of, uh, of what we are looking to offer the, the marketplace weekly pay is being something that we're very proud to, to implement, um, among other items here listed. That's also a, a picture of our uh, employee dining room, which is, I think, the nicest one I've ever seen. So we're excited about that. Uh, 18 talks a little bit about our diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion. Our focus area is being leadership, culture, recruiting, and onboarding. Um, so you'll notice that that uh, that theme throughout all of our uh, different intricacies of our, our business. And so it's something that we're highly focused on and um, happy to answer any questions as it relates to that. This is a, a 19. We just have our leadership team here. If you have any questions about our leadership team, we're more than welcome to answer those as well. Um, moving into community impact. This is a, uh, a slide on page 21 that we're, <clears throat> we're excited to, to share. Um, we do believe that we can produce roughly 154 million taxes uh, to the state of Nevada in year one. Um, so we're proud to be a part of the community and add as much value as we possibly can to the to the, the wider state. Mr. Muffson. Yes. We uh, like to take turns up. Okay. Sometimes I do. Sometimes he does. <laughs> sometimes she does it. Bad. Nevada. Uh. <laughs> my turn it's, it's always hard because i always feel bad but i'm help okay. it's helping you i appreciate that. You. the team is probably very disappointed in me <laughs> um moving into blue cares uh we we actually have <clears throat> initially when we when we uh started the project we we made sure to implement our blue cares which is our charitable organization out of miami and really start Leaning into where we want to invest in this in this city and in the state. So this is a list of twelve of things that we've done over the last twelve months. Um, not necessarily as meaningful as we plan to be going forward, but still um, putting our best foot forward to date. And that is the rest of the presentation. You can see our lobby rendering and the lobby photo, which is a magnificent uh, masterpiece that we're excited to to show everyone. So thank you. I apologize on the spelling. Yeah. For the pronunciation. Um, so right now we're talking about the project itself. Um, beautiful, uh, just beautiful. Does anybody have any questions or comments uh, related to the project and what we've heard thus far? Thank you. Sharing the microphone. I don't know if they, said <coughs> they didn't give me one today. <laughs> I think it's just a building issue. Um, with respect to the hiring, I understood that you're going to ramp up your hiring in September, October. Do you, have you, what's your plan of attack? It seems like that's a lot of people to bring on board and get granted and trained. It is. Yeah, no, we are, um, listen, we're working very closely um, with the union. We're speaking to them, of course, on the culinary side, uh, but we have a, a big, robust plan. We're using outside consultants to help, you know, drive that, the, the uh, uh, media in the process in order to basically attract all those people. But starting in September 1st, we're gonna be having um, showcase days and really bringing people in on a mass hiring basis. We have a strategy that's roughly, I think 2.2 hires or, or interviews per hire, which is a little bit aggressive. Typically you'd want like three, three and a half, four. Um, but we, you know, in today's market, <clears throat> that's the right way given our timeline. So um, we'll see how successful we are. And I'm sure we'll have to calibrate along the way, but we're confident we'll get there. Are they giving you any indication with respect to, um, uh, I guess, challenges or problems hiring uh, people in some of the um, key functions, you know, like, uh, security, housekeeping, uh, those that require? Yeah, I mean, I think there's still some some softness in terms of hiring on the culinary side um, and on the housekeeping side. Um, but we're, I think that 
what's going to be refreshing to the market is our culture and and some of the benefits that we're offering and our brand um, and being private owners and in, in a market that's practically all you know company owned um, I think it's going to be an advantage for us to attract the right talent. When do you think you, uh, or when do you anticipate that you'll have majority workforce in place? Oh gosh, uh, definitely by December. <laughs> <laughs> How much prior to the opening do you anticipate? This <laughs> team to be on board. Uh, probably about a month before. Okay. So there'll yeah. be some training time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we know we're laying a lot of training. Our first impression is a big deal to us, so we're we're making sure that we that when we show up, we show up right. And thank you. I, I asked that. I mean, even here, this day, there was still some shortages, like in Valley parking at the property that stayed at. You know, it was difficult to find staff. It took me quite a while to check out this morning because there was nobody at the front desk. And yeah. They were very apologetic, very nice, you know, staff shortages, that sort of thing. But that just. Something that Jeff and I are very focused on is the front desk experience and so forth. It's not easy. Um, and, and we'll put our best foot forward on it. But yeah, it's a, it's a huge focus of ours. Thank you so much. Thank and you. yeah, the project is beautiful. I'm very excited to see it come back, come full circle. Uh, prior owners you know, had great expectations for it and unfortunately through it as well. So it's nice to see it come back to the original and uh, see it come to fruition. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Mark Antonis. Mr. Mufson, Mr. Sofa, congratulations. After going through a lot of the materials you've provided, and when you did your culture pillars, which are very all-encompassing for sure, and then that one statement, differentiation from competitors, can be really tough in this market, union or no union. And you have all done an excellent job of putting together an employee team member package that covers a lot of bullet points that many people miss. Las Vegas. So well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank We're very excited. Me. Yeah. For you. All. We are too. It all starts with the people. Yeah. So thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jay. And, and sir, are you pulling from the talent in the Miami team to help you set up here to make sure everything is top notch and runs smoothly in terms yeah, of setting we, things? We have a um, a robust corporate team that that I call or refer to as our task force in sense. Um, that, uh, that we'll utilize as we as we ramp up the opening. And is everything in place to have your compliance plan in place before opening? Are you? Yes, okay. I believe we were on track. All right. Look at that talent, <laughs> your talent team right there. Um, I, I did appreciate the presentation that you made in front of the board. I thought it was very thorough. Um, and the DEI program, it sounds very robust and meaningful. When I heard the statistics of about 247 executives, you have 56% women and 35% minorities. So I mean, that is meaningful. And I think that is a priority and it, it's it's evidenced in, in the numbers and, and what you're doing. And I also appreciated um, the presentation you made about the workplace culture, you emphasized the cultural pillars, which my fellow commissioner mentioned, diversity, collaboration, growth, and development, full engagement, and humanized hospitality. That's not a phrase I've heard before. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think um, we use it a lot, actually, uh, on a daily basis. And our, our interpretation of humanized hospitality is something that um, uh, that means a lot to us. Um, but first and foremost, it, it's about being yourself. Um, and not not uh, being as robotic as some of the training out there uh, requires. So we encourage all of our employees to be, uh, in, you know, entrepreneurs in in and of its own self and in their own businesses. Right. Um, we encourage bottom up communication versus top down. Um, so it's we're excited to see and hopefully they're receptive. We know in Miami it's been extremely successful in how we've implemented it there. So um, and, and everyone's been receptive to date. Well, good job and, and keep up the good work. Uh, could you provide me with just a little bit of more detail about the charity work you do, maybe a specific project of which you're very proud or, or something that you could share with us? I know that you've identified a number of Nevada-based charities that you were going to work with, but just historically, I'm curious. Uh, so in Miami, you're at, uh, yes, in Miami, um, we do every year, we do a lot for uh, breast cancer. We host a lot of events at the at the Fountain Blue in Miami. Um, we have a, uh, a actually a very significantly large dog charity that we that we support. Um, we fortunately, uh, we own a, a, you know, a large property on the beach, which is rare. Um, so we're able to to support that charity in and of itself. So we're doing a lot of things like that. Get back to our employees, send them on trips and so forth um, to make sure that 
their families and everyone is happy at home, which makes them happy life, happy wife, happy life, yep. happy at home, happy at work. Um, so that's that's how we, we what we've been known to do. Can you talk to me a little bit about kids and the power of work? That that project you've been involved in, where you have uh, businesses joining with community volunteers that teach uh, the schools and children, <clears throat> sounded very interesting. Oh, uh, Jeffrey, I don't know if you remember that one from. That's from. Uh, yeah, I can talk about it actually. So, uh, children of fallen heroes. Is that you're referring to? It's, or are you referring to the one the, in Miami? It's. I think it's in Miami. It's kids and the power of work. <clears throat> Oh, that so on that one, it's basically bring kids to, to work days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a program where we where I think we have about forty of our executives, and then they have a individually assigned child that comes to work with them. It sees almost like a shadowing uh, workplace. I hope you do that here in Las Vegas. Yeah, it I think it'll be very cool very anyway. interesting, and I think an excellent opportunity for Las Vegas children to see that. No doubt. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very excited to see this project going up and excellent presentation before the board. I have no areas of concern. Thank you. I'm sure if I might. Mr. Mosin, our apologies for the, the jumping on you for the pronunciation of the state. But if it makes yeah, you feel better, my it. father, who actually lived in the state but was from the East Coast, never could do it correctly. So he just called it the Great Silver State. So you no, know, if it, it does make me feel better, if if it if it helps. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got your one mulligan. Um, a, a couple things, if if I might. The um, well, number one, you know, Mr. Sofer and others, uh, this has been such a saga this could be a netflix mini series of the 23 years and how it's come i'll call it full circle but i know it's far more complicated than that but what a wonderful addition to the portfolio of gaming properties and hotels in las vegas to the state this is a, a wonderful state asset and certainly that part of the strip needed the you know, the boost and, and the almost $4 billion investment is just extraordinary. So this is a, certainly a, a welcome and exciting opportunity. And, and, and uh, you know, this is something we're all looking forward to. Uh, just to confirm, though, this is a preliminary finding for suitability. So we'll see you all again in, I believe, November. That may be a question for, well, what you're shaking your head, but that's confirmed. That's we'll, see, we'll, we'll see you again later this year. Um, one of the questions that the board did discuss, and I've not heard it here, but I, you, you wear many hats, but president of this property is no longer one of them. Did you hire a new property president? And yes, you we, we hired a, a Mark Tricano. He was at uh, previously at Galaxy in Macau and prior to that, uh, stations in, in, in Las Vegas um, and Caesars prior to that. So long time. Been, uh, so he's coming from the galaxy. Was that yeah, he's here already. Time? He's been he's been with us for about a month now. No, that's all I have right now. But but thank you very very much. Thank again, you. This is a you know you you should consider that Netflix contracts again. This is a, <laughs> it's got all the elements of great drama. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Shrek, did you have anything else on the project itself versus individuals? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, um, Madam Chair, uh, I would just, on a personal note on charity, uh, before they even got started, uh, uh, they made a very substantial donation to the Nate Adelson Hospice to a program named after my uh, late wife. It's a complimentary therapist program. So I, I told them uh, when they come into the community, they're going to be expected to do it. And they were already doing it in Florida and they're very anxious to assist already in, in Nevada. So I appreciated that. And I can tell you when we come back for permanent licensing, school, uh, Mr. Ruffson, pronounced it better. Thank you. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I think, you know, I had split up kind of the questions and or commentary first on the project itself, and then perhaps uh, without requiring presentations per se, uh, if any of my colleagues have any questions or comments related to individuals, we could do that. Um, Madam Chair, I, I just have, at this point, I have one, one question, um, and it pertains to Mr. Mofson. Um, I just want to, and the board did a good job, uh, but you uh, had some assets that were associated with the cannabis industry, and I just, you know, just for the record, you were completely and fully divested 
Uh, I know you've assigned those assets to someone else, but you have no interest uh, in them whatsoever financially, correct? That's correct. Thank you. And that, that's been since January, at least? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from everyone? All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. Well, thank we appreciate you, the presentation and the deck materials and just learning about the, uh, the project. It's very exciting. Um, and at this time, if it appears right for a motion. Chair, I'm prepared to move for approval of non-restricted item number one as uh, read into the record by Madam Secretary and as recommended by the board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I would like to say, and I said it in front of the Gaming Control Board, but this was a very difficult and, and complicated investigation individually, especially for Mr. Sofer, because you've seen the reports and how complicated his business life is. Uh, and uh, uh, Senior Agent Jeff Zinn and Agent Ashlenberg did a wonderful job and very cooperative, very thorough, very detailed, and, but very professional while they conducted themselves. We appreciated their help. Thank you. Okay, at this time, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in non-restricted number two. Non-restricted number two is the application of Dreamscape Companies, Inc. for registration as a holding company. It is also the applications of Dreamscape Companies, LP and Dreamscape Companies, LLC for registration as an intermediary company. It is also the applications of Dreamscape Flamingo Road Management, LLC, doing business as Rio Hotel and Casino for a non-restricted gaming license and for licensure as a manufacturer and distributor. It is also the applications of Eric Birnbaum, Thomas Ellis, Dreamscape Companies, LP, and Dreamscape Companies, LLC for finding of suitability as a sole shareholder holder, officer, director, general partner, limited partner, sole member, manager, and or key executive as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have disclosures on this item. I do. I do. I have a disclosure uh, with regard to non-restricted item number two. I would like to disclose that while I was employed at the Venetian Resort in a leadership capacity, um, I supervised Janice Fitzpatrick, who was our CFO for much of my duration at that property. And Ms. Fitzpatrick is representing this company is now their chief financial officer. Um, you know, the judgment of any reasonable person in my situation would not be um, materially affecting uh, be, be materially affected by this past association, certainly. And therefore, I intend to participate Pate, in this matter before us today fully. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I also have a disclosure, Madam Chair. Okay. Dreamscape Companies LLC is adverse in a transactional matter for a client of Lewis Roque at the firm where I am a partner, in which matters I'm not personally involved. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independent of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Commissioners, Madam Secretary, members of the board. Sonia Vermeys, along with my partner, Frank Schreck, from the law firm Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, Schreck. Uh, with us this morning are two of the applicants that are listed on your agenda. Eric Birnbaum, the founder of the company, and his partner, Tom Ellis. They have the positions as listed in the agenda. Also here this morning, Trevor Shearer. He is the CEO and president, along with Janice Fitzpatrick. She is the CFO. Trevor uh, and Janice, their applications are not for you today, but they are filed with the board, along with the applications of other executives. You have received our confidential presentation deck, uh, and I understand that you have probably reviewed the board hearing or at least looked at the transcript. Um, so we will try to abbreviate our presentation this morning, but hap to, happy to give you as much or as little as you'd like to hear. I will have Mr. Birnbaum step up and uh, begin the presentation and go from there. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, I was told to be brief, um, but I'm happy to stop and flip pages or you guys can chime in, ask any questions that you want. 
um, as we as we proceed. Um, on the little deck that we have here, we begin just giving a, a little bit of an overview of what Dreamscape is, what we're associated with, and, and really what our primary focus is. In short, um, we are a real estate development company, primarily focused on hospitality, residential, and now obviously gaming as well. Um, these are some of some of the opportunities or the projects that we've been involved with to date. Um, and flipping to page three shows a little bit more detail of the diversity of projects that we have been associated with. On page four, uh, talks a little bit about the evolution and the uh, purchase of the Rio, which occurred in 2019, December 5th to be exact. Thankfully, when we bought the property from Caesars in December 5th of 2019. We obviously had no idea that three months later, the world was going to end. Um, the way, however, that we structured the deal, thankfully um, for us, is we entered into a sale leaseback. So um, we bought the asset, entered into a lease. They then continued to operate the asset, pay us a fixed rent. And then that term went on for actually ends in December of this year. We have the ability, obviously, to terminate that at free will, which we're planning on doing come October. Um, but that gave us, it was always the intent for that to be, call it an insurance policy. While we put our business plan and finalized our business plan, uh, hired the proper team and really begin to, to, to move forward. We didn't realize that that insurance policy would turn out to be a true insurance policy. Um, as obviously the world shut down during COVID and, and we were very thankful for that and lucky for that. Subsequent to that in 2019, the, the expectation was always for us once we had our plans in place and once we had finalized our business plan to bring in additional capital, refinance the asset and then begin with the renovation. That uh, all went Thankfully, knock on wood, according to plan, we did refinance the asset in February of this um, of 2023. That then gave us the incremental uh, equity to go forward and to begin the renovations, which are just about to begin. And in fact, um, perhaps some of you have seen the Rio recently. We structured a deal with Caesars where some minor renovations could begin while we were still in this leaseback period with them. So if you happen to drive by the Rio most recently, you'll see some of the moldings on the outside of the building are getting cleaned up and painted, and it's starting to, to really look, look new, which is, which is quite nice and exciting. Um, we're also, as of, I guess, in the beginning, actually in about a couple of weeks from now, we're going to start renovating some of the rooms still under Caesar's uh, sale leaseback. And then in October, of this coming year, we're gonna have an official uh, detachment from Caesars, and then we're gonna begin operating ourselves. Um, so we obviously would never have stopped the lease with Caesars until we knew or felt completely comfortable that our team was ready to take over, that the transition was um, in, in full force. We know that we have 60, it's at 65 days um, until the actual transition is going to take place, but that, is really where a ton of our attention and detail is right now. We're working really with three parties, um, obviously ourselves. We're working hand in hand with Hyatt, who is an exclusive partner with us on our reservation system. And we're obviously also working with Caesars. And thankfully, um, you know, all those three parties are, are working really smoothly. And we're once again, knock on wood, hoping for a pretty smooth transition. Can I ask you just a quick yeah. question with regards to that? Um, on. Yeah. When that transition uh, is expected in October, is that going to be a full transition at that point, or are you doing it in, in phases? Full, full, full just transition. It, just rip off. the bandaid off. Care and once again, we would not, I don't want to be flippant about it. We wouldn't do that. We technically have until December of 2023. However, we um, are so let's call it confident enough that we're ready to execute that early and, and begin the transition now. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Yeah. 
is me. May I just ask a question related to that transition as well, Mr. Bimbo? Quickly, when the band aid is ripped off, when December arrives, whether it's October, December, will that also terminate any um, rewards program affiliation with Caesars? Will that continue thereafter, even though you will be? your team will be managing the property. Yeah. So when we purchase the asset, we actually purchase five years of Caesar's database. So we own that database and we have culled it, mined it, and really have gone through it to, we're, we're ultimately creating our own database, which is gonna start in October. But as part of the initial foundation of that, it really is coming from the database that we bought from Caesar's. I see, thank you. Yep, thank you. So is the rewards program going to be different? Are you changing the name? Is it rebranding? It's gonna, I don't know. Hopefully our head of marketing won't kill me for saying it, but it's going to be called Rio Rewards. And the one other thing I will say is that I think undoubtedly, undoubtedly we will be the most lucrative rewards program um, in the market. Sorry, related to that, will, uh, will customers have an opportunity to use any existing rewards at that time? Uh, I assume they'll still be able to use some of the other Caesars property before they have any opportunity to use them at the Rio. That's a very good question that I don't want to misstate, but yeah, Trevor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry to get bogged down on yeah, the reward please. thing. You can tell we're all yeah, no, I'll do anything out getting. We'll redeem reward. all your rewards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it wasn't clear to me at the board <laughs> meeting, but when you were talking about the Hyatt, you were talking about rewards and Hyatt in the yep. same sentence. Um, so I, 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 I understand the acquisition of uh, the gaming side of this, but is the Hyatt part of this reward equation? So we have our own rewards program, which is going to be called Rio Rewards. Yep. Hyatt is our exclusive partner on our reservation system. So we're in a franchise agreement with Hyatt. So our partnership with them is we get to plug into their reservation system, access all of their customers that would otherwise want to come to Las Vegas. Historically, Hyatt has had no presence in Las Vegas, and so we now with um, MGM. I'm, I'm sorry, that was an affiliate transaction, so it was sort of a license agreement. This is a true franchise agreement. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Thank you for for that <laughs> distinction. Yeah. So, can I get double rewards if you yeah. you book through Hyatt? Uh, it, it, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Depends how the vote goes. All right. Just giving you a chance to go for the fence here. All right. Thank you. Sir, so, just a quick follow up. I, I understand that the renovations are mandate, mandated by the Hyatt franchise agreement. How are they involved, if at all? Or is this something that is on your side? I mean, is there collaboration? Is there a veto power? I'm just interested in how no, that works. No veto power. It's truly collaborative. And, and the way this, the, the deal with us works is it's all. We're all aligned. Um, certainly the technology behind all of that is something that Trevor can probably talk a little bit more about and I know is is very comprehensive and quite painful um, and something that's going on real time as we speak. Um, but we will own the database. It is ultimately our database, but they are a significant part of the pipe that we're gonna be plugging into. Thank you. Yep. Can I ask, do you, does your marketing um, chief have a plan or, or um, a goal to market social media? And because I would just anecdotally, Rio is, you know, on social media taking some, I think, unfair hits um, from, you know, social media has a lot of traction for certain. Uh, folks coming to Vegas, and I was just curious if I know it, you must know it. And so I was just curious, do you, do you have a plan? I don't need to know what it is, but I just am always very curious on, on you know, marketing. Yeah, no, for sure. I, look, I feel like my job is tech support. Nobody ever calls me and tells me good news. So of course I hear every, every negative thing that, that comes out there. And we're certainly aware of the perception, at least by some of the asset in the market. Um, we wouldn't be putting $350 million into the asset if we're not hoping to change that perception, but you can't really change the perception until you deliver a better product. Some of the commentary that the Rio gets is candidly, I think, deserved. Um, so our job is to change that narrative and really change the product so that we can stand on our own two feet and get 
and get the critiques that hopefully we deserve. And hopefully those critiques after we spent $350 million will, will be different. But um, suffice to say, there isn't going to be an element of channel as far as marketing is concerned, whether it's social media, whether it's direct, um, that we're not going to be attacking and hitting and, and trying to showcase the asset. One thing that is also, I think, worth mentioning is that unlike the Fount Blue, which is opening brand new and has this whole new asset that, you know, day one, boom, is going to be this new great asset. We are an existing asset that is actually doing quite well from a cash flow perspective. And our renovation is going to be a phased in renovation that, that happens over time. So when you come into the asset in, sep in October or call it November, you will see certain things beginning to change, but not all things. So it's all going to be happening incrementally. So I think that the, our true verdict of what the new Rio is going to ultimately be really won't be cast and um, finalized until the 18 month um, renovation is done. So, and that is from a marketing perspective, a very challenging thing to, to, to do, but that is something that we're very conscientious about. That's what you have Tom for. That is exactly right. <laughs> Um, well, I just want to comment to your yeah. counsel as well as you. And I don't, I'm I'm sure it's, it's helpful to me. It's helpful to my colleagues. The decks are great to have. Um, just the what is? I'm sorry. The the, the presentation materials. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, for us, um, should have said that on the blue, but I, I didn't. But I really appreciate having that information. So, um, does anybody have any additional questions or comments regarding the presentation? What's the duration on the construction from inception? I know a little bit has started already, but the true construction, what's the plan in terms of the timeline? We're, um, it's going to be an 18 month timeline for phase one. So just to be totally succinct and clear, phase one encompasses, if you go to page seven, it, it, it sort of illustrates that it encompasses the Impanema Tower, which is 1500 keys. Um, it encompasses approximately seven food and beverage venues. It encompasses the convention facility and, and um, upgrading that. It can encompasses the pool deck. It does not encompass, basically what it does not encompass yet is really the masquerade tower. Where what, what our game plan is, is that we believe that over the next 18 months, we're going to learn a lot, see what the customers like, what they don't like, and then reflect, digest, and then move into phase two, which will be the second phase with some lessons learned for the next thousand keys and the rest of the food and beverage venues. And what's your estimated completion date overall? And I, I'm not holding you to it. I'm yeah, just curious. Yeah, I mean, I think if we had, if I could wave a magic wand, probably within three years. Okay, thank you. Maybe sooner, hopefully. <laughs> Mom, is it is it your intent by any chance to bring back any of the nostalgic memories buffet. of the Don't Rio? The <laughs> Everybody um, keeps asking about the buffet. I would wait in in line. You do not for have hours to answer that. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> but uh, that would deal social media a bit of a yes. I, at our last meeting a couple of weeks ago, I got hammered about the buffet. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, um, <laughs> I'll come cook you dinner. But, but look, I, I, I think there's really two things that we've learned, and I think this is in, almost industry-wide, is people's behaviors, plain and simple, post-COVID have just changed. Um, a lot of people with germs and leaving food out and psychology around that are really anti-buffet. And I think that it's not a coincidence that when you look across the strip and you look across Las Vegas in general, that the majority of our competitors out there have really eliminated that. So unfortunately, I think it would be very cool to reinstitute the buffet because I know Rio was obviously um, well regarded for that. I just do think sadly times are different and we, we just really need to adjust to the time. So we were going to have, we think, an exceptional food hall that we hope is differentiated and hope makes it a name for itself in another, from, from that perspective. 
Thank you. Very exciting. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Just quickly about, um, I don't know if you're getting to that or if that's the conclusion for you, but in terms of keeping em employees, um, what's your retention? Have so I don't have the exact stat. I think maybe I do in my head. Um, we offered 1,510 offer letters for existing employees and 1,507 accepted. Is that close? I was within a percent. I, uh, but suffice to say over 90 something percent um, are staying on board That's excellent. And, and moving on with us. And the competitive um, health plan and benefit and uh, all changing, the, being modified or you're just- it, It's certainly being modified okay. simply because we're not Caesars and we have to have our own program, but mm -hmm. all very marked. Um, all very marked. Okay. I apologize if I cut you off in your presentation. Yeah, no problem. I'm advised that you didn't actually get to finish, so I didn't the, mean the, to do the that. The rest is a lot of fluff, um, just showing some pictures of before and after, some renderings. There are some structures of our, our fairly complex, complicated structure, but at the end of the day, like once you get through it, like fairly, fairly benign. Um, and then there are just some highlights of key individuals that we've hired and that, that are in place. And I, in, in, in total, that that is pretty much the presentation. So, but certainly happy to answer further questions. Madam Chair, if I might. And thank you, and again, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Um, it's not fluff, it's all wonderful, informative, and actually very helpful. To, to get a feel for the project. So thank you for, for doing that. And I really appreciated the organizational structure that was part of it because this gives me the biggest headache in the world. Oh, I, I, you I, and, you know, somebody owes me a drink just yeah, trying to, to figure out. You and me both. This. I can answer pretty much anything other than that. Okay. <laughs> but for the record and those who can't see this, this is a, an organizational chart that is I don't know. Th there's got to be a good word for it. Our lawyers were paid by the by the circle. Okay, <laughs> all good. But the additional materials were very helpful to to yes. not be able to have to focus on that other one. Yep. So I had no question. I just had a snarky comment. <laughs> just to kind of pile on that comment. <laughs> Most of it, I, I I guess I shouldn't speak for all this, but my eyesight has gone bad. So those little tiny details and circles just don't work. Yeah. I mean, if you have to make them larger and have them expand, that would be great. Because mm -hmm. otherwise I'm sitting there with my magnifying glass trying to read this org chart. Yeah. I can't see anymore either, so I, I hear you. Thank you. Yeah. If I could ask one final question about um, community involvement, partnering with charitable organizations in Nevada, is there anything that you've identified that you're working on or going to work on that you could share with us today? We. 100% are committed to that and are, are engaged in it. I would be remiss um, to mention them by name. So Trevor probably has a much better insight as to the exact causes. I know there, there are many though. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. For the record, um, I was born in Nevada. I was raised in Nevada. I went to the University of Nevada. So uh, thank you for that. He's um, showing off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, charitable organization. I sit on the board of OV Opportunity Village in Las Vegas, and, and I've been on it for, for quite a while. And they've got some very robust programs that we do, the path to work and some other things that, that they, they offer us and some strategies, opportunities to put people to work there. We also got involved with community schools early on. And Eric called and asked us to get involved with that. And another member of our management team is involved with that. And we've got a very... Um, deep-rooted uh, senior leadership team at, at the property who all are involved in the community and, you know, dress for success. And I could go on to name and name, um, but they're all involved with it. And it's part of uh, what we do as, and what we're trying to build as a culture within the organization. Thank you for sharing that. I just think it's important to, oh, absolutely. to understand your culture and to get that on the record. Yeah, just a fan of just a second, um, shameless plug, but uh, we, we've involved uh, the Caesars folks that are currently at the Rio with helping us identify what we want our culture to be going forward. And our partners at Caesars have been fantastic in allowing us access to those folks so they can help be part of the development of that program as we move forward. And uh, Eric's numbers were pretty close. We're, we, we've, we're really happy with the amount of employees that decided they wanted to continue the journey with us. I think it's, it's refreshing to hear that. Thank you.
Does anybody have anything else before I promotion? Okay. Um, understanding that we obviously watched the meeting or read it, um, watched it uh, and have the materials in the presentation today, um, told by my colleagues that someone might be uh, ready to make a motion. I'm sure I'll, I'll give an attempt. There's some reading here, if, if I might. But uh, again, thank you. you know, this is just a, a wonderful leadership team. Uh, you know, you've really built a special team out. And again, it's uh, congratulations and love the fact and that um, you only lost three people uh, in that transition. Uh, and you know, Lord knows where they went or they moved, but, but good on good on all of you and, and good luck in that transition. Um, I would move to approve uh, non-restricted item number two is read by Madam Secretary and approved by the Gaming Control Board with the following conditions. Number one, the surveillance system must be maintained at or above the standard that it's approved. Two, prior to the commencement of operations, the attestation letters regarding the internal control system must be received by NGCB Audit Division pursuant to NGC Regulation 6.090. Three, prior to the commencement of operations, an adequate written internal control system that documents compliance with minimal internal control standards, minimum uh, in internal control standards must be received <coughs> by the Nevada Gaming Control Board Audit Division pursuant to NGC Regulation 6.00. Finally, number four, key employee application must be filed within 60 days of issuance of the state gaming license and thereafter be refiled within 60 days of any change in the person occupying that position. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time and your appearance today. And Judge Assad really wants that buffet back open. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in uh, non-restricted number three. Non-restricted number three are the applications of MGM Resorts International and Mandalay Resort Group LLC for continuous or delayed public offering. It is also the application of MGM Resorts Manufacturing Corporation to guarantee securities and hypothecate assets in conjunction with a continuous or delayed public offering. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval, and I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Thank you so much. Uh, Mandalay Resort Group and MGM Resorts International are clients of the Lewis Roca, the firm where I'm a partner, and MGM Resorts Manufacturing is an affiliate of MGM Resorts International, in which matters I am not personally involved in, which have nothing to do with this application. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item. I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Talgati, Commission members, Executive Secretary Rupert. For the record, my name is Chandler Pohl. I'm Vice President, Legal Counsel at MGM Resorts International. The matter uh, before us is a renewal of an existing approval for a continuous or delayed public offering for MGM Resorts International and Mandalay Resort Group. MGM Resorts International is a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange with more than 10 million in stockholder equity. In addition, uh, MGM Resorts International has filed all reports as required by the Federal Securities Exchange Act. These, um, these items satisfy the requirements of Regulation 16.115. Uh, the shelf approval is helpful for publicly traded companies like MGM Resorts International. For that reason, MGM Resorts International kindly requests an affirmative or an approval for a three-year renewal. So the Last, last use was July 20? Um, I think so. Last, yes, no. it was last granted July 20th. 2020. Okay, do we have any, opening up for any questions or comments? By the way, thank you for being here today. Thanks. Thank you, this seemed pretty straightforward to me, but with respect to the draft, uh, are we working on draft one, date 6-9? Yes. 23. Okay, just wanted to make sure, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, this time, Madam Chair, yes. just if I might, um, came all this way, we have to ask you a question. So I totally get the banking function here. And, um, and there's, this is for both for equity and, and debt, you have that discretion. 
Last time you did it under the shelf was a debt. It was a venture for the 750 million. Is that correct? Um, looks like last time it was used was October of 2020. I'm not sure exactly what that one was. And so there's no, I, I know it's just sitting there ready to use, but there's no anticipated route between equity and debt, just whatever suits your fancy in the market accomplishes. Yes. You know, I, I'm, you know, certainly your audit committee is important for anything that's SEC regulated and, and those things, which is exactly your company. Just a question. I see that Mr. Meister, who's incredibly qualified and, and, and talented, is becoming the chair of your audit committee. Is that correct? I believe that. I have Sean McGinnis with me as well. Outside. And, and Mr. McGinnis, I, I don't mean to get into many details, but it was included in our information. So I just wanted to better understand. But he is part of that MGM, I believe. And could you just explain the independence necessary for a director to chair an audit committee? Is that well, well, Commissioner Sean McGinnis, Mother Snow, uh, and you're correct. He is, a, he is one of the... Uh, Key executives on Bet MGM committee, which has, or the management of Bet MGM, which has three MGM officials and three maintained individuals. And Mr. Meister was before you uh, last year, if you remember right, and it's, it's found suitable. Um, but uh, my understanding is, is essentially the intention is to have somebody, you know, outside of, you, you know, he he is outside of the company, it's not internal, so he would be outside to chair of the audit. I think that and again, I, I don't want to press hard. It's just more for my education yeah. for governance. Um, if MGM owns half of that MGM, which he is an executive of, uh, it, it just the independent, you know, that, you know, I've been, I've been, been in that seat of the audit chair of a public company and it's tough and, you know, just want to just understand the governance that went behind well, that. Well, sure, it's great. I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. And I don't believe, uh, uh, Chandler is as well, but what we can do is we could follow up, get you an answer to that question. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, sure just, I, I wouldn't want to speak on behalf of something that was done that I wasn't aware of. I just, I do understand that he's in that position, I understand that they put him in that position need to have, but with what you're asking, if you need something, you know, further, we can certainly follow up with you. Okay. You know, just because it's contained in the materials is really why I'm asking. And I don't know when I'd have Know, another opportunity governance and SEC and shelf registration. This is all about the SEC. Oh, yeah. uh, well, and, and clearly, and, and action yeah. is is about. And I was just curious how governance decision came up. Mr. Meister is an incredibly talented person and skilled, and we've approved him and, and supported. But I was just interested to see how the different pieces fit together as you proceed to the shop. Well, well, knowing how a lot of the other firms that represent MGM get involved. They're, they're very robust in, in making sure that everything is, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and that everything's looked at appropriately from both a regulatory compliance and a legal compliance. And, 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 and you don't, this was a curiosity. Okay. This is beyond the scope of the regulatory duties of, of the, this commission. So I'm satisfied. I, I, okay. I just thought I'd ask because you were here in the room. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Does anyone have a motion? I'm happy to make a motion. I'm just told they're having a hard, the transcriber is having a hard time hearing me. I move for approval of non restricted item number three as read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Game Control Board. And this is pursuant to the order registration draft one dated 6 9 2023. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you. Madam Secretary, if you could please read in non-restricted number four. Non-restricted number four is the application of Caesars Entertainment Inc. for an amendment to their order of registration. It is also the applications of Tropicana Laughlin LLC for transfers of interest as noted on the agenda. Lastly, you have the applications of Tropicana Entertainment Inc. for licensure as sole member of Tropicana Laughlin LLC and to pledge membership interests as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval and I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Yes, thank you so much. New Tropicana Holdings Inc., New Tropicana Opco Inc., and Tropicana Entertainment Inc. are adverse in an open trademark matter for which 
uh, for a client of Louis Roca, the firm where I'm a partner in which matters I'm not personally involved. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item. And I don't believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the commission, Madam Secretary, A.G. Burnett with the law firm of McDonald Carano here representing Caesars Entertainment. And standing next to me is Mr. Jeff Hendricks, the SVP and Assistant General Counsel for the company. We laid down a pretty robust record on the uh, board level, I hope. Um, but in sum, we've essentially got three things going on here uh, on this set of applications. Um, <clears throat> we're amending the order of registration to reflect the new indenture the company had um, because of a new refi of portions of its debt. We are also updating Caesar's revised order of registration for cleanup purposes, uh, mainly because of the William Hill sale. And then we are transferring interest related to the Tropicana entities to move uh, the ownership of Tropicana Laughlin. So that at the end of the day, Tropicana Entertainment is the percent sole owner of that entity. Um, with that, we are here to answer any questions that you may have. I had a, just a brief uh, point of clarification I needed in connection with the 5.7 million in violations. Are you well versed in that? Mr. Hendricks is, I believe. <laughs> so it's my understanding, Mr. Hendricks, that 3.6 million of that related to a potential fine for the Swedish operating business. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And there's some additional context I can provide there if that'd be helpful as well. Please. So um, that $3.6 million figure was the initial potential liability uh, that arose from business practices from a uh, international subsidiary that Caesars acquired through our acquisition of William Hill. And as I'm sure the commissioner recalls, our strategic goal with that transaction was then to very rapidly invest of the international businesses and focus domestically. So the 3.6 million was an initial liability that is still being contested, was never settled, has not yet been settled. So Caesars did not pay a $3.6 million fine on behalf of that operating subsidiary. Uh, and additionally, the actual matter that's for the amount in controversy, if you will, is now much uh, appears to be in the kind of 1.2 to 1.5 million dollar range after you uh, account for um, uh, currency conversion, uh, and that matter is still being appealed with the relevant Swedish authorities. So um, that's uh, some information on that 3.6 million. And sir, when you say it's being appealed, is it fully briefed? Is there an oral argument set? I don't know what the procedural posture is in that jurisdiction i'm just curious yeah great question and i would probably be out of my depth to tell you the exact procedural posture of it now it's being handled by swedish council on behalf of the buyers of the uh, international businesses so at this point it's now uh, completely the responsibility of the buyers of that uh, of that business okay and if a fine is ultimately assessed who is paying for that uh the buyers of the business okay just wanted to make sure and then for the balance, because I know it was 5.7 million, so I pulled out 3.6 million, which has been reduced now based on conversion and other issues. Um, can you explain to me the balance of the regulatory violations and fines? Because those are not William Hill related, and they're not the Swedish regulatory issues, right? Just a little clarification for the record, please. Yes, absolutely. So um, I think one element that, of that is regulatory violations that uh, apply to our brick and mortar casino businesses. Caesars is a geographically diverse company. We operate in most of the jurisdictions that allow brick and mortar gaming in the United States. Um, some have a different approach to uh, assessing fines in relation to regulatory discipline than others. So what we've reported is the consolidated amount for all of our brick and mortar casinos, which we do uh, to our compliance committee and board of directors on a quarterly basis. Uh, and to the board on a quarterly basis as well. Uh, the other aspect of that fine schedule would uh, relate to the growth of our digital business, uh, which as I'm sure, I'm sure you know, following the growth of that over the last you know, four to five years, uh, we have implemented a number of steps uh, to improve the compliance and operational controls around that function. Uh, we've grown our compliance team uh, very significantly. We've grown our trading team significantly, uh, dramatically improved our customer service function in that business, um, really invested in every aspect of our digital operation. And so you will see fines have accumulated over the past four years. Uh, I'm very optimistic that that is uh, a reflection of you know, the dramatic growth and scale of that business, and that we've instituted the proper controls to reduce those moving forward. 
And to be clear, I think it was about 375,000 that was attributable to the Caesar Digital um, fines. Is that correct? That's that sounds roughly accurate. Okay. I couldn't tell you if that's a specific amount, but I'd be happy to verify for you. And could you just, by way of example, explain uh, the genesis of those fines? I'm not understanding on the digital side, Caesar's Digital. Uh, yeah, sure. So those fines can arise in a number of different contexts, similar to fines uh, attributable to a brick and mortar business. So I think that there's a couple of different groupings you could put those in. So one would be um, kind of operational controls, uh, whether a proper wager was posted in a certain amount of time, um, you know, issues with a, you know, payout or some sort of kind of more um, uh, recurring nature that we try to address on an ongoing basis. Uh, you could also then group an amount of those into um, issues just dealing with uh, entrance into a new jurisdiction, whether that's, you know, adhering to uh, new advertising regulations, uh, ongoing uh, registration of new vendors, that sort of concept. And then we've also encountered some issues with uh, some of our operating platforms. We're working very diligently to move off of uh, that particular operating platform. I think that's probably the other main tenant that goes into uh, the amount that you just described. So it sounds like growing pains and these issues are being resolved and worked through and are not likely to be recurring. Is that fair? I think that's very fair. I can On tell you. Skill. Yeah, top to bottom, we work to improve the effectiveness of that organization every day. Um, we just had our uh, clients committee yesterday. In fact, we've discussed additional improvements we've made. So it's very much a focus of the combined company. Excellent. Thank you for addressing that. I appreciate it. Of course. Madam Chair, I neglected to thank you and the commission for waiving the appearance of Mr. Yonker. We appreciate that. And not to throw him to the wolves, but I also neglected to introduce Mr. Nolan Pura, who is the VP of Finance here with us. And he may be able to answer some questions you have on the next application item. Okay. We've also looked at draft number one. There haven't been any changes since the Gaming Control Board meeting. That's the, uh, the 622-23. Um, I think you heard a lot about that at the meeting, uh, that it's a record ranking order. <laughs> it it may very pages. well be. Did you ever figure out the electronic cert certificate versus the actual? Um, that probably is a, a reg that needs to be cleaned up. I think I understood the answer was if there's a, if it's a subsidiary, there actually may be a physical certificate and that has to live in the state of Nevada, but otherwise it's all you know, DTC and electronic, right? That's right. We're happy to work with the board on any amendments they may want to. Perfect. Thank you. With. Does anyone have any additional questions or comments? No. Okay. Um, thank you. No, th this makes absolute sense. Cleaning up you know, the liability side of the balance sheet. So I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with everything <coughs> all done today. So I would move to approve non-restricted <coughs> item number four is read into the record by Adam Secretary Rupert <coughs> and recommended for approval by the Game Control Board. Uh, and this specifically, again, is a 12th revised order registration draft number one. Correct? Correct. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you Thank very you. much for being here today. We appreciate it. We're going to stick around for the next yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Hi, Madam, <laughs> Madam, <Secret> <laughs> Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary. Well, he doesn't have his cane anymore, so I know we can sprint right back, sprint right here. Um, uh, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in non-restricted number five. Non-restricted number five is the application of Caesars Entertainment, Inc. for a continuous or delayed public offering. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval, and I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Thank you. Caesars Entertainment is adverse in free open matters for clients of Louis Roca, the firm where I'm a partner, in which matters I'm not personally involved. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Okay, so this draft is draft number one dated June 22nd, 2023, uh, correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. Um, this is a, a routine renewal of the company's shelf uh, registration. Uh, Mr. Hendricks and Mr. Pura are here to answer any questions you or the commission might have, uh, but we're otherwise good to go with. Excuse me. The um, I don't have any questions. Fairly straightforward. If 
Nobody has any questions. Does someone have a motion? I don't have any questions, but if you could bring up the gentleman that you wanted us to ask questions of, that would be great. <coughs> I didn't catch who it was. That'd be great. Uh, Mr. Nolan Pure is the VP of Finance. Hi, Thank you. I appreciate it. I actually don't have any questions for you. I just wanted to put a name to a face. Uh, we appreciate having the opportunity to see you in person, recognize the so uh, it is pretty straightforward and I'm happy to make a motion for approval of non-restricted item number five. It's read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the game of the Pro Board, uh, pursuant to the order dated uh, draft one 622. That's correct. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number six? Non-restricted number six is the application of Joshua Solis for finding of suitability as a key employee at Golden Entertainment Inc. <laughs> the recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for <coughs> approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Thank you. Golden Entertainment is a current client of Blue Stroke, the firm where I am a partner in which matters I'm not personally involved in, which are not in in any way involved in connection with today's application. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. So I had Zoom appearances, right? Okay, so uh, welcome. Good morning, Chair Tagliati, members of the commission, and um, Madam Secretary. My name is Phyllis Gilland on behalf of Golden Entertainment. Thank you very much for letting us appear by Zoom. Uh, we appreciate that. With me is Joshua Salise. He is our Chief Technology Officer. Um, Joshua uh, is going to give you very quick, um, since we've already provided a quick background and a and review of his duties. And obviously we're open for any questions should you have them. And we appreciate your time. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Toliati, members of the Commission, and Madam Secretary. Uh, as Ms. Gillen indicated, for the record, my name is Joshua Solis, and I've been the Senior Vice President and Chief Technology Officer for Golden Entertainment since July 5th, 2021. I'd like to thank all of you for the consideration of my application. In addition, I'd like to thank <laughs> um, Chair Hendrick, Dr. Watkins and Judge Assad for their thoughtful review, questions, consideration, and recommendation regarding my application. Last, I'd like to commend Agent Bridges on her professionalism and patience with me while I completed this application and associated work. Uh, as I mentioned to the Gaming Control Board, she was a true pleasure to work with uh, as this is my first time going through this process. As a quick recap of my work experience and current responsibilities, I've been in the IT field for 33 years, the hospitality industry for 23 years, and the gaming industry stationed in Las Vegas for 17 years. With respect to gaming, I've worked in the following companies, MGM Resorts for just over a decade, where I progressed from director of IT to uh, vice president and chief technology officer, Wynn Resorts for two and a half years, as the Vice President of Infrastructure and Operations, and now with Golden Entertainment for the last two years as a Senior Vice President and Chief Technology Officer. My day-to-day -day responsibilities are primarily focused on strategic technology initiatives and IT operations while managing cybersecurity risk and compliance adherence. On a personal level, I resided in Nevada for 21 years. I live with my wife, her mother, and our dog. In summary, I am a long-term resident of Nevada. I've been in the gaming industry for quite some time, and I have an extreme amount of respect for the diligence required to obtain a non-restricted key license. I would welcome any questions you may have regarding my application. Well, thank you for that affirmative presentation. It's nice to meet you, and we're glad to have you here um, by Zoom. Um, at this time, I am going to open it up to my colleagues who may have any questions or comments. Um, I'll start, Commissioner. Thank you, and again, uh, very nice to see you, Mr. Solis. Um, you know, I I'll echo the comments made at the at the board meeting. Uh, you, your your record, and you know, double E from 
from Purdue, you're a boilermaker, but transitioned to psychology. So you know, there's some redemption in, involved. Uh, <laughs> I, I won't ask you what kind of dog you have or, you know, the priority of the family that you live with, but my dog's number one in my house, certainly right above me. Um, no, but you're, you're exactly the type of individual and I'm echoing some of the, the, the board comments that we wish to find suitable that we want to have in this industry to be engaged as you are. Um, you know, you make, make the industry proud and you know, I'm fully comfortable, totally comfortable to, to, to move forward with proving your suitability as a key employee. Any other comments or questions? Commissioner Brown. Thank you so much and welcome. I appreciate your time today and presenting for us. Can you tell me how you got interested in psychology? It's an interesting segue. So I actually was taking some courses uh, and unrelated to psychology, more related to technology. And I took a few psychology courses and it occurred to me that number one, I really, really enjoyed psychology as a topic. And number two, um, it's what I do nowadays. I deal with um, people all day long in a leadership capacity, and I thought this all applies. It's extremely relevant to the teams that I lead and the people that I partner with as far <laughs> as how people think and how they handle situations and, and how they behave in certain situations. And I thought, you know, in my career now, it's more important to understand the psychology of who I'm working with and who works for me and, and, and those types of things, as opposed to uh, my ability to be a technical uh, resource, <clears throat> not hitting the keyboard anymore. That was a long time ago in my career. Uh, so that's, that's where I kind of fell in love with psychology, to be candid. No, I, I think that's very interesting. I think it helps you in terms of feeling empathy for people who are having meltdowns or not understanding technology. I think it really helps to bridge the gap. But were you uh, pursuing the bachelor's degree in psychology at UNLV while you were working full time? Yes, I was. Okay. I, I, I just think that's commendable. I mean, you, you're a hard worker. You're tenacious. I'm happy to have you in front of us as a first time applicant. And I fully support your application. And thank you again for, for coming before us. Thank you. And I had a thought about you. I thought you should teach at UNLV as an adjunct professor to bridge the gap between IT and psychology because most of the IT people I've encountered I could use a little bring that up because massaging at my firm. My firm degree. <laughs> but I, th I think it's a it's very interesting dichotomy. And I think it's a, an interesting course. I don't know if it's been taught, but you should consider it. Thank you. I'm, I may just. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Um, I would simply say before I call for a motion that, um, you know, that what my fellow commissioners say, um, I think we all agree. Um, we're pleased to have you here and uh, your commitment to the gaming uh, community is important. And um, so I, I echo those comments. In light of that, does anyone have a motion? No, Madam. Chair, I'll move to approve non-restricted item number six as read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended for approval uh, by the Game Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Solis. Um, Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number seven? Non-restricted number seven are the applications of Joanne Whitaker for finding of suitability as a director and officer at Betfred Group Limited and Light Cash Limited. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Light Catch Limited is adverse in an open matter for Betfred Sports, Arizona LLC, a client of Louis Roca, the firm where I'm a partner, in which matters I'm not personally involved. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Or, or morning for us. Good yes, morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, no, half past seven in the evening here, but thank you. Good to see you all again. Thank you for being here via Zoom. We appreciate it. Um, I know your counsel is appearing from the boardroom in Las Vegas. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Tagliati and members of the commission and Madam Secretary. 
Uh, my name is Stan Johnson of the law firm of Cohen Johnson, and it's my pleasure to bring this item before you. This is for the suitability of finding a suitability for Joanne Louise Whitaker as Chief Executive Officer and Director of Betfred Group Limited and Light Kitch Limited, which are the parent companies of Betfred Sports Nevada, which was uh, found suitable as a key employee uh, to manage the Mohican Gaming Sportsbook at the Virgin Hotel in January of uh, 2023. Um, and I would like to thank the commission for allowing Ms. Whitaker to appear by Zoom. As you know, she lives in the United Kingdom. So that's a, a great accommodation for her. And also thank you for allowing me to uh, appear from uh, Las Vegas. Um, I'd also like to thank the board and uh, their staff also investigative staff that worked on this application and the supervisors. Uh, as always, very professional and thorough. I appreciate their work so much. Uh, I'd like to just very briefly give you a little background on Betfred. Betfred was established by Fred and his brother, Peter Doan in 1967 with a single retail shop in the United Kingdom. Betfred now operates over 1400 shops in the United Kingdom and in other areas and also in the US, which amounts, which amounts wagered in 2022 were 8.7 billion pounds with an EBITDA of 83 million pounds. Uh, Betfred employs over 11,000 uh, staff throughout the company. In the US, Betfred is operating in 10 other states with seven pending launch and additional five that are uh, in progress. Betfred has uh, chosen to base its US operations in Las Vegas and currently employs approximately 75 employees, which they plan to increase that to 90 to 100 by the end of this year. Um, as a longstanding business partner and trusted Doan family uh, friend, Joanne Whitaker was appointed as CEO and director of Betfred Group in April of 2021. Uh, but because of the fact that the application for Betfred was already pending and issues with COVID and things like that, her application uh, was held back to this time. And that's why we're in front of the commission again at this time for the approval for a final suitability for her uh, as the CEO of uh, Betfred Group. So with that, I'd like to turn the time over to um, Ms. Whitaker and she can answer any questions you may have for her. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm Joe Whitaker, CEO of Betfred Group based over in Manchester, England. Um, I've been in post for two and a half years. I gave you quite a I don't want to repeat information you heard last time if you've seen the recording. Um, any questions you have for me? I'll start with I'll start on my left here. Uh, Commissioner Marcantonis, do you have any questions or comments? No, thank you for joining us again today. I don't have any questions, Madam Chair. It's well covered. Commissioner Brown. Just wanted to thank you for your time. Your background is, is impressive. I know you have three kids, a supportive husband, and you are a busy human being. You do quite a bit. Um, I, I see your work with Angel Advance and Fidelity Limited. Those are very interesting projects. I don't know if that's the right word, but one is a family-owned company specializing in child care vouchers to help reduce the cost of children for families. And the other one is a UK-based debt solutions company that provides debt advice and administers debt management plans. How did you get interested in those projects? Um, I was working for Betfred 20 years ago, and I was running the IT department. I was a developer by background, and worked really closely with Fred and he always dangled the carrot of offering to back me in business if I ever had a good idea and on the proviso that I would find my own replacement because he was useless at IT and still is. So I had my, <laughs> my first baby um, who's now 19 and traveling around Europe and he, I heard about this 
tax break, this scheme that could help people. And there's a big employer, no one had heard of it. And I just thought there was an opportunity. So while I was on my maternity leave, I went back to my development skills and designed a website, wrote the back end system and went back to Fred to say I found the idea. And I actually took on his son-in-law as my replacement, who wasn't his son-in-law at the time. So um, some matchmaking skills there as well. And it was really successful. We managed to grow it to a hundred million turnover. We work with the majority of the public sector in the UK, working with their staff. Um, and, and I loved it, but the business was looking after itself. I put a professional management team in place. And also there was a change in tax legislation, which means the scheme is now in runoff, which is a bit disappointing, but it just keeps going and it keeps making money. And it, it's a really nice little business. But once I could see that business was self-sufficient and the management team were looking after it, it was all tech based. Um, I was interested in how we could support people with debt advice. And so we formed, we went through FCA regulation um, through their innovation team and we developed the first end to end automated debt advice. So that tool is there and live now, but those skills have been really useful to me in my role today so working in an fca regulated environment and the governance that's needed there but also understanding the markers of harm how debt affects people how gambling can affect debt have just given me a really unique insight to safer gambling and as you're aware we've had issues in betfred in the uk um it's been a real period of uncertainty with the white paper and changes in requirements and the expectations around affordability which we're now going into consultation on with the gambling commission in the uk uh, as a as a whole industry not just betfred um and i'm really excited to be involved in those discussions and look at how we can identify people who are at risk of debt and gambling harm at, at the right and appropriate time without being too intrusive because, you know, 99% of people can manage their gambling sensibly. So, yeah, in the end, it's all ended up coming together. But I can't say that was the plan. It's just well, ended it, up that way. It ended up beautifully. And I, I'm very impressed with your background and, and the, the time that you spent on maternity leave has paid off for you. So, I mean, yeah. you, didn't, you don't seem like somebody who rested. Busy people get things done. So I have absolutely no areas of concern. And I'm happy to see you again. And, and thank you for spending time with us today and giving us thank more you. background. Commissioner Solis Rainey. Uh, thank you for being here, Ms. Whitaker. I know there's a huge time difference and we appreciate you uh, joining us today. Um, I echo the comments of my colleague. Uh, you have an impressive background and I have no concerns regarding personal suitability. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about uh, a fine that I read about uh, last week, I believe, uh, that was imposed by the UK Gambling Commission. Yeah, that's right. Um, we did discuss it in January when we were there because we did know that, you know, we were already under investigation at that time. Um, we went into settlement very early because we accepted the findings that the Gambling Commission had. So it was a failure in some of our AML processes and uh, social responsibility there was no criminal behaviour found, but there was a risk there because our processes weren't up to where they needed to be. So we accepted full responsibility, put corrective measures in place, and the Gambling Commission recognised that. Thank you. I just I wanted to confirm that was the same thing that we yes, had previously discussed. Um, I just saw saw it on the on national news report, so I wanted to just make sure that I was on the. Yeah, right. no, it's, uh, it's exactly the same one. We were very transparent about it back when we were there in January because the investigation started last year. So we wanted to make sure that you guys were fully up to speed with where we were at as an organisation. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I don't have any other questions. Uh, Commissioner Krolicki. No, just uh, another wonderful uh, applicant for suitability for this commission today. Uh, your 20 year career. Uh, but so your professional resume, your your personal story is just delightful, and, uh, and just it's a, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the regulated person of Nevada group, if you will. But uh, I'm sorry we're over your supper time, your eight hours, and I won't ask you about Manchester United and football this year. So. 
<laughs> Thank you. Well, I too uh, echo the comments of my colleagues and I support your uh, application. And so at this time, I'm going to call for a motion. Chair, I move for approval of non-restricted item number seven as read into the record by Madam Secretary and as recommended by the Gaming Control Board. Okay, any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. It's unanimous. Congratulations. Ms. Whitaker. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Council. much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'm being asked by uh, my colleagues for a comfort break. So we're going to take, um, I don't even know how far the is. Five minutes. Thank you.
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Rosa. Testing. Yay! Thank you. Take it. Oh, you speak here? Okay, so who's going to tell me when we're ready to go? Oh, are you going up? The court reporter's here. Thank you for the break. I can't hear. This is the court reporter. Can you hear me now? <laughs> can she hear us? Yes, I can hear. This is the court reporter. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We're going back on the record um, and continuing with our uh, July meeting. Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number eight? Non-restricted number eight are the applications of Fidelity Management and Research Company, LLC, Fidelity Institutional Asset <coughs> Management Trust Company, FIAM LLC, Strategic Advisors LLC, Fidelity Management Trust Company, National Financial Services LLC, Fidelity Brokerage Services LLC, Fidelity Diversifying Solutions LLC, Fidelity Clearing Canada ULC, Fidelity Investments Canada ULC, and FIL Limited for a waiver of the requirements of Nevada Revised Statute 463.643, subsection 4, and a waiver of the time limitation of Nevada Gaming Commission Regulation 4.080 as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval, and I believe we have a disclosure on this item. Yes, thank you very much. Fidelity Management and Research is adverse in an intellectual property matter for a client of Louis Roque, the firm where I am a partner, in which matter I am not personally involved. I have no pecuniary interest in the outcome of this agenda item, and I do not believe the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in my position would be affected by the relationship described on the record, and I therefore intend to participate. Thank you. All right, so we have, um, I believe, counsel. Mr. Gutwaltz. Hello. Hi, how are you? Here. Good. Dennis Gutwald with the law firm of McDonald Carano. Uh, with me via video is uh, Fidelity's Brian Comtoss. Uh, thank you for waiving video appearances. I'm appearing on behalf of Greg Giordano today. He had a family emergency he had to deal with. And um, uh, this is a standard three year uh, institutional waiver request. Um, Fidelity has done this many times. This is similar to the ones they've done in the past. A new entity has been added. Um, we've looked at the draft uh, of red order of registration. It looks good to us. And with that, we'll open it up to questions. Okay, just for, for the record, we're talking about the draft that's uh, dated June 26, 23, correct? Draft number one. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, at this time, I think we've had an opportunity to uh, go through the materials and the investigation. I've looked at the order. I'll open it up for questions or comments uh, by my colleagues. 
Hi, and, and, and uh, welcome, and Mr. Tomfuss, I, I don't know if I have their name correctly, but thank you for, uh, I think you stood in at the last minute to, in, in the family urgent matter. Um, this all looks fine to me, I understand it. Uh, this is really the subsidiaries that are used for the various equity holdings of Fidelity, um, which is a different construct than perhaps some of the other asset managers. The new entity is the Fidelity Diversifying Solutions. LLC, I believe, just confirming. That correct. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think it's all very straightforward. And I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. Thank you. Do, do any of the commissioners on my left have any questions or comments? Okay. Please. So um, we appreciate you being present uh, here today. Um, you know, it was a tight turnaround for for getting input on consent. And so I appreciate you stepping in for uh, Mr. Giordano and both of you being here. This time it appears it's ripe for a motion. Madam Chair, I am happy to move for approval of non-restricted item number four is read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the game. I'm sorry, number eight. Okay, sorry. Number eight, uh, as recommended by the game control board. Um, any dis I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. She already clarified this is pursuant to uh, order number one, draft dated June 26, 2023. Any discussion on the motion? All right, there being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And it appears there are none opposed. Thank you again for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. You guys have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, you too. All right, uh, Madam Secretary, could you please read in non-restricted number nine? Non-restricted number nine are the applications of Empire Technological Group Limited for licensure as a manufacturer and distributor and to issue a stock option to Jeffrey Evan Harris to purchase equity interest as noted on the agenda. It is also the applications of Lin Yi Fang and Darren Keeley for licensure as an officer, director, shareholder, and or key employee as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have a recusal on this item. Yes, thank you. My law firm, Louis Roca, um, is representing the applicant and I must therefore recuse myself from voting voting on this matter. Good luck. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Togliati, members of the commission, Madam Secretary, the record. I am Glenn Light with the law firm Lewis Roca, and I'm appearing on behalf of the applicant, Empire Technological Group Limited, doing business as Play Synergy. I am accompanied at the podium by Lin Yi Feng, who is the president, secretary, treasurer, director, and sole shareholder of Empire, and Darren Keeley, who is the chief technology officer of Empire. To briefly recap, Empire is a manufacturer and distributor of gaming devices. It is based in Nevada and currently employs around 60 people. It is licensed now in approximately 90 jurisdictions and has an impe impeccable compliance record. In March, Empire received a unanimous recommendation for approval by the Gaming Control Board, and the recommendation was subject to a two-year limitation. At the commission hearing, you raised some important points of clarification that you wanted addressed before rendering a decision. Accordingly, you kindly allowed us to refer the matter back to staff to address these items. I'm very pleased to report that Empire has worked diligently with the Gaming Control Board, and it remains their unanimous recommendation uh, to approve the application before you. I would also like to express the company's gratitude to the Gaming Control Board for completing the supplemental investigation in such an expeditious manner. Uh, securing a spot on the July agenda is of particular importance to Empire because they were recently one of three successful bidders in the Aruze bankruptcy. Uh, of note, Empire won the bid to acquire Aruze's electronic gaming and slot machines and its accompanying intellectual property rights. And Empire is working with a group of the secured lenders to acquire their rights in approximately a thousand slot machines that are licensed to casinos nationwide, including approximately 400 machines here in Nevada. So obtaining a Nevada gaming license today would allow Empire to complete the acquisition as soon as the sale is approved by the bankruptcy court. And we understand that the court is meeting tomorrow, and this would benefit multiple parties. 
including the group of secured lenders who desire to sell their collateral rights to Empire, the casinos that want to continue to lease the machines without interruption, and most importantly, the employees of Aruze, um, who Empire is committed to help. Importantly, Empire, in conjunction with another stakeholder in the bankruptcy process, have publicly announced their intent to provide the vast majority of the Aruze team members with new employment opportunities. Lastly, this acquisition will help Empire cement its rise in the industry uh, from an emerging manufacturer to a mature manufacturer, as it will continue to expand Empire's technology, markets, personnel, and expertise. With that, we are happy to answer any questions that you have. Well, I'll open it up to my colleagues. Uh, maybe start with uh, Commissioner Solis Rainey. Thank you, Mr. Light, for being here, and, and thank you both to Mr. Fang and Mr. Keeley. Um, I appreciate uh, the additional materials that you provided. Um, I just want to start off saying, I, you know, much of the confusion, I, I'm, I'm still not sure quite what happened. Our investigators do a great job in uh, preparing the materials, and there was disconnects. Uh, part of it, I think, is because of the similarity in names, and also when names are shortcutted even by the parties when I went back and looked at the transcripts you shortcut names without using the full entity name and they start crossing over into each other. So I um, wanted to clarify the LT Game International Limited was formed by Mr. Our original material said it was formed in 2012 by Mr. Wang, but I understand it from, I understand from the revised materials that that was actually formed by Mr. Fang in 2011. So yes, Mr. Fang, created LT Game International Limited okay. in 2011. Mr. Wang formed LT Game International US Limited later on, but- In 2013. In 2013. He initially called that not, that company the same name, LT Game International US Limited, and it was immediately changed. Well, the, his, uh, Mr. Pangs didn't have the US, no, but sometimes, didn't. like I say, even when the parties talk about it, you talk about them interchangeably. I apologize. And that's, that creates great, uh, great confusion. I know in my mind, even going back and reviewing the materials, um, it was hard to keep track of who was who, but I think at the, I have the company straight in my mind at this point. Um, with respect to um, the source of funds for the investment in, L or F2, I, I apologize. I still had uh, some questions with regards to that. I know there was a clarification our, our original materials have the investment amount, investment funding is 2.2 million, but I understand that's 300,000. And part of the disconnect is uh, they had included 2.6 million was transferred from Mr. Feng's account into um, F2, F2 TPS, F2 TPS, I don't know if that's the official name of the company, but 400 came back. What was the reason that 400 went back to Mr. Uh, Fang or Empire? It actually said it went back to Mr. Fang. Yeah. Yeah, that's a distribution. So initial investment, I think we'll listen. Yeah, that, that's the initial investment, $3, three million. And uh, w if I may ask, which 400,000 we are mentioned here? To come it indicated in our materials that the original transfers was 2.6, and then 400 was transferred back to Mr. Feng's account. I think that was the promissory note that you did to have to. Yeah. So uh, uh, if I may recall, at that time, we invest into the F2, but the COVID hit and uh, uh, the operations didn't carry on. And uh, that's why I was, the money is in the bank account. That's why they pay back F2, return back, pay back as a uh, payback loan to me. Okay. During the, the last meeting, we, you know, we asked you about the source of funds and, and you indicated that the funds came from your savings, from a loan taken out with your home as collateral, and then also from uh, Empire's, um, I don't, let's see. Sorry. 
bear with me, I lost track of my page. Uh, Okay, yeah, you indicated it was uh, from your savings, used to your home for a loan, and mostly Empire's working capital. And the reason that I questioned that be was because that was in 2020 when our materials indicated that because of COVID, your company, Empire, and the LT Game Canada, who's a paradise company, had share entered into shared services agreement because of financial difficulties in both and obviously the pressures of the pandemic. Yeah. So it seemed odd to me that it would have that much working capital. So I clarified with you, I asked, um, so this 3 million investment, the source of funds was not from your brother or his company. I, I said from your brother and you indicated that it wasn't, that it was from savings. And you indicated, yes, um, there's no relationship with anybody. In the materials that were now provided, it clarifies that that actually was loans from your brother's company. Yeah, it, it in is, part. Yeah, maybe I caused the confusion with it. Is a is a short term cash advance because at that time I was sourcing a, a, a funding from um, PDS Group, which is a licensing company in U.S. Uh, in Nevada here. So during the period then the uh, the agreement is fell apart, we don't really get a, a conclusion. Then uh, that's the time we uh, take uh, uh, some of cash, uh, working capital from Empire. Empire has the cash is very short term loan, not a short term cash advance from LT Canada to us, which is we pay back in like uh, eight days. The longest is 14 days. We just pay, uh, the, the uh, pay back to, to do LT Canada, just a couple of days because at that time need to close the deal. And uh, my uh, loan agreement with PDS is fell through during that time. Okay, just stepping back a little bit, you indicated that it's working capital. If it's a loan from the company, basically, it just seemed like a pass through. How is that working capital? Um, uh, I apologize again. Maybe my I'm really not a count, uh, accountant to 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 uh, clarify the loan and the cash advance. Right. So my understanding is this: because we are doing service for LT. Uh, Canada at that time, we do have a lot of transaction with developing a game, uh, a game and software for them in uh, what they call for the yeah, Macau market. They always pay us for our service over there. So it's not a, a borrow from them. It's really just a, a advance payment, a, a cash advance to us because we also always have a working relationship with them at that time. Okay. Um, and then with respect to the repayment, um, Mr. Light, and the materials that you provided, you provided dates of repayments for most of the amounts, except for the 450,000. And I'm looking at, uh, I don't know if you're, it's attachment number four for us, page 29, maybe 29 of your memo. Uh, page 29. Right, the last two advances, if you will, are not addressed in the payment, in the repayment. Empire LT game, so 400,000 and 455,000. Uh, the last one is uh, 50,000 and the one right above it is 400. So a total 450,000 doesn't show as repaid. I, okay, since we, I don't. I don't think we included that because of that. There were short-term cash advances of one point four five million, but we were just focusing on the one million that was used to source F two, which, if we count that up, I, I imagine that was the top four. So we didn't go into those last two payments in in greater detail. But the amount sourced to fund F two was actually three million. So, but from LT in Canada, it was only one million. As, as a short-term cash advance. That's not what our materials indicate, and that's not what yours seem to suggest. So, the... So there was a $3 million fund um, funded into F2. Of that, there was 
$200,000, which was a capital contribution by Mr. Feng. And then uh, the remainder, which was 2.79 million, uh, was a um, was uh, evidence in a promissory note between Mr. Feng and Empire Technological. So then if you broke down that 2.79 million uh, from Empire to Mr. Feng, there was um, There, there were various source of funds, Mr. Feng, um, but for, for LT Game Canada, I believe that only made up $1 million. $1 million and $5,000 was sourced from short term cash advances from LT Game Canada. That was on page 29. <clears throat> Because of the, if, if you go to. Right, your materials say a million five thousand, a million five thousand. The other materials we had said it was 1.2, some, I th believe 1.2 million of it was from the original materials, indicated that that much came from the loans from the Paradise related entities. Yeah, which is a point. Yeah. So we, we, we're happy to, I mean, we, we ran these figures past the game and control, but we're happy to do a supplemental report to them um, to, to confirm the specific amount. Yeah. Yeah. But um, based on our based on our latest review, it was a million dollars and 5,000 was sourced from LT Game Canada for use into F2. All right. Well, the two questions that you know we sure. basically asked to address was the source of funds for the three million, which I think is still a little fuzzy, and it still shows. I mean, I know you're indicating that they're cash advances. They seem to be loans from the other materials, so there seem there's a lot of looseness in the interrelatedness between the company, and I I don't see that that really eased up after 2021 when you made a concerted effort to separate those. Um, the materials you provided confirmed that some of the employees were still paid through uh, LT Game Company, the, the Paradise Entity, through 2023. I believe Mr. Keeley was on their payroll until 2023, and then one of the other individuals became a consultant. That's neither here nor there in terms of the application, other than I'm concerned that the information that you're provided isn't always I, and when I say you collectively, you, I don't know who's providing what, but there's a lot of liberties taken with which entities are actually involved in these transactions. And the same thing seems to have occurred in, during the Singapore licensing with respect to, you know, whether or not they had offices and employees uh, and that, you know, the tax issues seemed ongoing. So I still have concerns about who actually is funding the sanity and whether the right individuals are before us. So um, to, to, to respond, we believe we've worked thoroughly with the Gaming Control Board to, um, to show that they are separate and distinct entities. Certain employees did work for Paradise, but they, they, had, they, had, they had separate and distinct responsibilities when they were working for Paradise versus when they were working for Empire. They received pay checks from both companies. It, it got um, so there were distinctions there, and and also you know again this is a, a we're requesting a two year limited. We're going to continue to show all of our bank statements to the gaming control board during the investigation. So we'll hopefully that will give you comfort that we are separate and distinct, we're totally different entities over the next two years. I'm just not comfort, comfortable today. I mean, nothing that I've seen in the materials. And I understand you, you're indicating you presented this to the Game Control Board. And, and of course, they acknowledge that you presented this information. But as I understand it, they didn't do any additional investigation to verify this information. So, um, you know, I, it, a lot of it was very helpful with respect to the entities and stuff. But it wasn't helpful in my mind with respect to the interrelatedness and answering fully all my questions re regarding the source of it. Um. But I don't have any further questions on okay. that. Commissioner Marcantonis, any questions, comments? 
I don't have any questions. I mean, the, the comment is a very complex case. There's no doubt about that, but I have no further input, Chair. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Kralicki. Processing. <laughs> um, a couple things. And thank you for going through this extra inning process. Um, it's important. It's exacting. It's supposed to be. And you know, in the subsequent time when you first appeared in March, some of the issues were clarified. There, there, you know, the agents do a wonderful job. Everyone's trying their best, but there were inaccuracies. So I appreciate my my colleagues' questions at the time and and and, and the follow up. Um, you know, these things need to be perfect because that's what we do as regulators. And, and no apology, but, you know, again, I know it's a very frustrating process. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I greatly respect my colleague and her comments I'm, I'm hearing, but I'm not sure how to move this thing forward. Um, in reading the materials last night, seeing the corrections, I felt I, it was... No. In in my mind, clarified, um, I, you know, I I was comfortable moving forward based on the testimony and and, and uh, other things today. So I'll yield to my, I'll put it back to my colleagues. But I I uh, I, I, I appreciate their, you know, there there may be further pieces of information that can be gathered in a in a way that, you know. If it's necessary to create comfort on the commission, you know, I'll I'll accept that. But uh, again, I came in here believing that the record was sufficient, and and appreciate the graciousness of of you know coming back and, and doing this. I in, and and for the record, we haven't said it. We said it a lot last time. But I believe in the tax issues. You know, you, you've spent two hundred thousand dollars, if not more, in trying to set the record straight, and with the, not only the IRS but Macau and other jurisdictions. So, uh, I, I believe you are absolutely trying to do it the best you can. Um, so, I, I'm just not sure, you know, how we can move this forward okay, today. I, but, but I'm, I'm, I would be comfortable doing so. But I, I, I yield to my colleague, and 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 I let. You know, my colleagues set the tone. If I may, I, I'd just like to say that, you know, we've worked with the Gaming Control Board for an investigation that's taken them several years. It's been painstakingly in detail. We would expect nothing less. Um, we went back to the Gaming Control Board. We worked with them again. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I believe they are comfortable with this recommendation for approval. And as I said, it, there is a two-year limitation, so... We will continue to be under investigation. You will see us again if you approve us. Um, hopefully that gives you the comfort, but I'd ask that you defer to the Gaming Control Board's exacting investigation to this matter. So the two-year limitation for the um, Attorney General's office um, with the burden shifting, right? It wouldn't, sh it wouldn't shift to us in the event there was something in the next two years that came up or it would. You know, I'm talking the I'm 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 not being very articulate right now, but it's it, it expires in two years, correct? But if something happens, for example, there's some record during this investigation, something loose um, comes forth. Um, because that's one of my concerns is is he's like, I get it, it's hard. Believe me, as someone who went through the federal judicial vetting process, I know what it's like to try to recreate everything you've ever done. I understand it. It's difficult. It's hard. And I'm certainly not um, putting any bad motive. I'm simply saying, Commissioner Sol is really a loose kind of loosey, loosey, not really distinguishing in the, um, it was this much money and not that much money and it's paid right. You know, I, I understand where she's coming from on that. Um, and so the, you understand what I'm asking you? Yeah. Um, yes, Chair. If if you approve the two year limitation, um, the burden would then shift upon the board to determine any discipline or other matters. Uh, the board would but, be responsible for bringing forth any discipline. Is that what you're? That's what I'm asking, Chief. 
I believe after the end of the two years, it would automatically expire. It expires yeah, in two it, years, and then they it, would have to show a, suitability. The, the license that you would grant now, or the approval, goes away, and it's a brand new application to replace it. Okay. So the burden of proof is still on the applicant for the replacement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No, I'm um, sorry. Can I asked one more question. Sure. I, I missed it when I, as I was trying to find the other materials. Um, with respect to Victorian Investment Holdings, what was the, how was that property acquired, and what's the value? Uh, that property at that time we acquired by cash in hand is uh, four point five million dollars. I'm sorry. How much? Four point five million dollars, and we. Uh, Later on, we do uh, do a, a refinance with a, a Lexicon bank. Later on, but doing the transactions cash payment four point five. In our materials, it shows the value of that investment is one point eight nine four, so a little under two million. But the loan was three point one, so that yeah, again no, was no, another disconnect. No, it's not disconnect. When we do the uh, closing the deal, we pay cash four point four. 4.5 million dollars and later on uh, we go back to Lexington Bank in Las Vegas for a mortgage that uh, three point uh, something does the mortgage amount and that's the mortgage they give to us the purchasing price is 4.5 at that time cash and we finance it later on to a Lexington Bank so you financed it for a lower amount was that just to pull it no that is the bank policy they only finance 70 percent of the the fees the purchasing whatever it is okay yeah correct so the the remaining is cash will pay out okay so when they're showing the valuation they're not showing the building valuation they're just showing the amount of the it, amount that you still have basically invested so my understanding is that they uh, when they do the mortgage, they just do the evaluation. The evaluation come back is 4.5. Then they only uh, finance us 70% of that total amount, which is 3 point something over there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, I think um, at this time, what we need to do is um, decide this matter yeah, a vote. So someone would need to make a motion, and then we could further discuss if necessary and have the vote. Tune in for the rest of our lives <laughs> for two years. Well, what? perhaps I can do it. Okay. Madam Chair, I move for the approval of unrestricted item. Number nine, as written to the record by Madam Secretary, and as with the conditions and recommended by the Gaming Control Board. And I think they're noted on the agenda. So at this time, um, do we have any discussion on the motion? Just I, from my perspective, I, I don't know that the, I... I don't necessarily feel like there's there was nefarious motives, if you will, for some of the misrepresentations, but it seemed clear that the company was trying to create an appearance of the separation over between 2001 and 2023 when you came before us in March. Um, that separation in my mind still does not exist. Through 2023, it was still, it, there was just a lot of commingling. I'm uncomfortable with that and with the fact that I appreciate the fact that the tax issues may have been um, m simple mistakes, but they were ongoing. There was tax issues once, they went back, fixed those. There was tax issues, it was again, they fixed those. And I believe there was tax issues a third time. So I'm not comfortable moving forward uh, with the application um, between those discrepancies and the prior misrepresentations or I don't know if they were just misstatements to the Singapore um, licensing board, but I, I'm not comfortable moving forward even with the two-year limitation. So that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. Do we have any additional discussion or comments? Um, Chief's comments were important to me, and again, with the two-year timeline here, I, I, 
I, I'm I'm sufficiently comfortable with the effort that's been put forth. Um, you know, I, I I get it. You just have a very complicated uh, business world, and and I and, but I want to be fair. Um, they're legitimate questions, and, and and Commissioner Solis Rainey has done an extraordinary job digging into this, and I, I respect that and I appreciate it. But for purposes today, I'm I'm going to move you know, forward uh, on this vote positively. But uh, again, I I know the Gaming Control Board is working with you every day. You are working with them, and uh, we've got a two-year window here to perhaps further clarify any of these dangling issues, but for today's purpose, I'm comfortable moving forward, voting for the motion. Chief Hoffman, are there, is there any uh, thing that, uh, you know, for the record that um, you have to add? Yes. Uh, one thing, just to make it official right now, the limitation. Yeah. Right now, the limitation on the record is for the approval to expire in March. Uh, the March 2025 NGC meeting. So you might want to update that on the record to July 2025 to give it the full two years. So I think we would need an amended motion because it was on the agenda for March, correct? Yeah, so you'd, you'd want to read in the, the updated okay. limitation. Commissioner Marcantonis, do you wish to amend your motion to, um, to address the date um, as opposed to what's on the agenda at uh, March? Yes, I do, Chair. To July? Yes. Okay, that motion is so amended. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Nay. All right, so there's uh, three in favor, one opposed. Sir, uh, goes without saying that these details are really important for you going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Can I just say two things? First of all, we'd really like to thank uh, Gaming Control Board staff. Um, Agents Ballinger, Molitz, uh, Supervisor Barbie, DC Allen, Chief Hoffman were incredible to work with, and they really allowed us to get on this agenda so that we could help them, which helps us tremendously for the Ruse bankruptcy. Um, B, I've known Mr. Feng for several years now. I can say that he is incredibly upstanding. Um, I think a lot of the uh, quote unquote issues come from the fact that his company has expanded so fast, so quickly, over so many jurisdictions in so few years. It's a testament to his ability as a businessman, his knowledge of the industry. But with that quick growing, there, there are, um, it, it's tough to go back and, and, and recreate and sometimes, you know, um, issues happen. I am still getting used to the difference between regulate and judge, because when, in, when you're a judge and, and you win, that's it. <laughs> um, but I hear what you're saying. Um, you know, we have approved it and Commissioner Solis Rainey has made her position known. And so I think it's helpful for your client to be mindful of those uh, issues that she's perceived. And, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And just for the record, I mean, I wish nothing but the best for the company going forward. But I do, um, you know, just want to be clear that you need to be more precise and be very cautious in how you're representing facts when they're when you're doing it to any regulatory body or I mean anybody the misrepresentation in my mind is or misrepresentation or confusion that you've created is more problematic than the actual facts I mean if they, it had just been disclosed that they were, uh, you know, this other entity was making an investment, then perhaps, you know, they would have just looked at that and everything would have been fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with Paradise being, having been involved, but just the efforts to create this appearance that in my mind isn't, doesn't bear out is what causes a problem in my mind. Oh, I would just urge more preciseness. Thank you very much. Um, by the way, I should have made a record that Commissioner Brown did not, uh, vote on this matter based upon her recusal. Sorry about that, got to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's what I'm saying, in court, it's over. Not quite, uh, restricted items uh, held out for discussion is next. 
Um, at this time, Madam Secretary, if you could read in restricted number one. Restricted number one is the application of Double JHB LLC doing business as Norte Cantina for restricted gaming license. It is also the applications of Dennis Banks, Arthur Hinckley, Charles Johns, and Kevin Jepson for licensure as a member and or manager as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Good afternoon, Chair Cogliati, members of the Commission, Executive Secretary Rupert, staff and members of the board. I'm Dan Reeser with the law firm of Finnamore, uh, and I'm appearing today with the applicants as, as indicated by Madam Secretary. Uh, present with me at the podium and beginning to my far left are Mr. Hinckley, Mr. Banks, then on my right-hand side, Mr. Janae, and Mr. Jepson. To please uh, the commission, we'd ask at least for the purpose of the hearing that we consolidate uh, matters one and two. Uh, and as we did with the board, um, we can call number two and, and I'll just incorporate by reference, but they're, it's the same company, the same applicants. Yes, please. Um, Thank you. Um, we'll just have separate votes like the board. We'll take it as consolidated for hearing. Our appreciation to Chief Hoffman uh, Deputy Chief Allen, Supervisor Allen, uh, Senior Agents Peters, and Agent Partee. Um, they did a great job in assisting us in bringing the application forward to you. The applications uh, have received a unanimous approval of the board for, uh, or unanimous recommendation of approval by the board. Uh, consequently, with the chair's uh, direction, we can either rest on the record uh, before the board and answer any questions pursuant to regulation 2040, or we can provide an abbreviated affirmative presentation, whichever you desire. Is there any one of my colleagues that would like an abbreviated affirmative presentation? Or would you like me to just open it up to questions? Right, what questions or pleasure. Questions or comments? Starting. Um, okay, well, um, why don't we do this? Why don't you touch briefly on the um, entities and, and the disclosure issues? I know you make, you know, you've made a, a good record previously, but just to have that in our record is great. Certainly, Chair. Um, during the board hearing, we reviewed in detail the investigative agents areas of concern under uh, Nevada Gaming Commission Regulation 404. As was the case with the board, we can assure the commission that uh, none of the omissions or failures uh, to disclose were efforts to conceal or mislead. And most importantly, I'll emphasize this a couple of times, pursuant to Reg 4040 sub 3, at the time of the board hearing, your record was fully and completely intact. Every issue the board agents had raised had been fully addressed and every document we could find in the public record had been provided. In summary, not to minimize uh, the investigator's concern, uh, those uh, omissions or errors were ones of either lapses of memory, unavailability of documentation to the applicants, an unsatisfactory diligence review by a report was obtained by the law firm from a third party service, and it was not the failure to exert some reasonable effort in preparing the applications, which is required under the regulations and the statutes. We believe that the record developed before the board demonstrates that none of the oversights present facts in and of themselves that were disqualifying under the standards of NRS 463-170. As I indicated, the applicants fully and promptly responded to every inquiry from Agent RT. On many occasions, she refreshed their <coughs> memories about ancient uh, events or investments, uh, ancient in their mind, not under the standards of the application. Um, and we provided detailed correspondence and lodged in a data room such documents as we could locate in the public record. Uh, and as I said before, the application investigation and the applicant's uh, work product before board on the day it commenced fully satisfied NGC regulation 4030 sub 3. Um, I'm not going to otherwise recount, uh, as I did for the board, each one of the omissions to provide um, background on what the circumstances were, but I'm happy to answer any uh, specific questions commissioners might have on one of those issues. 
Well, I think the individual circumstances uh, were fully vetted uh, before the board as far as which entities and why and which lawsuits and, you know, after 2005, you know, business had been, I mean, I, I think we've all heard all of that, but I don't want to speak for my colleagues, so I will open it up questions or comments on the issue that just addressed by council. Madam Chair, just, just a couple comments. And I appreciate it, the abbreviated you know, affirmative presentation. I think that was important. Um, but certainly the record established in front of the board was, was, was quite detailed and lengthy. I, I think you've spent an hour and a half, uh, if not more, uh, having this conversation. So. And for those who aren't always familiar, this commission serves or, you know, either real time or usually on tape, that record. So it's very important and, and fresh in my mind. I want to be consistent. Uh, the last applicant uh, was, uh, you know, queried greatly about past issues that were not clear or things. So, you know, the same comments I made on the last application is appropriate here. This is an exacting process. We expect that perfection. We all have memories that fail, but you know, from undisclosed litigation to companies that you know you don't remember that you're still officers of. I mean, you know, I get it, but I kind of don't. But if going forward, this is the kind of business and license you want to do uh, in the state of Nevada, it has to be done perfectly. And, and, and I think that message has been themed very well today. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward based on the evidence that, that I've heard and the conversation and the testimony. But, but again, you know, I just want to be consistent going Sometimes. forward, you know, exacting perfection and, and all good. And I wish you nothing but the very best. Thank you. Any additional comments? I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for thoughtfulness and taking the process seriously. I mean, uh, 39 companies that were affiliated with the applicants were not included. 11 of them should have been disclosed. It's not one, it's not two, it's quite a few. So I just don't know if you didn't take the process seriously, you didn't take the time to create a timeline for yourself because you know you have to assist counsel and you have to assist yourself. This is a privilege, this is not a right. But the, the saving grace for me is number one, watching the presentation before the board. Um, I don't see anything nefarious about the omissions while they were substantial in the aggregate. There were things like we disclosed the litigation, but not the case number, but we weren't served. So all the explanations, they made sense, but it is really important when you hear the words like exacting, that's really your job. You have to present to us so it's easy for us. We don't want to spend time asking you why 11 of the 39 entities weren't disclosed, why you just didn't take the time to do it the right way. Um, the saving grace for me personally is that you made disclosures voluntarily of things like, for instance, Mr. Banks made the disclosure about the arrest in 82 where the records were really not readily ascertainable. So that is something that is negative that you voluntarily disclosed. So that to me was important. When Mr. Jepson made the disclosure about the arrest in March and May of 2006, that is a negative fact and it was freely disclosed. So to me, the important things were disclosed. I understand, you know, you, you know, uh, Mr. Jepson doesn't have any other issues, I think since 2006, it appears everything's under control there. And the candor is evident from the presentation, but, um, the fact that you disclosed the negative things voluntarily and the oversights that were explained gives me uh, the assurance to feel comfortable moving forward. I think everybody understands this process is very serious. It's a privilege. And so I don't have any questions or areas of concern anymore, only because I watched the presentation and I don't need to rehash any of it. So I do appreciate that. I think you all appreciate the process now. And I know it's, it's a unique process. It's a, the gold standard. So thank you for coming before us. I don't have any specific questions and I do appreciate the candor about the negative things, which makes me believe that you were not trying to hide anything. It's just maybe sloppy oversight, not appreciating the preciseness of the process. So I have nothing further. Commissioner Martin Tonis, anything? Yeah, I too watched it 
And I have no further specific questions, Chair. Thank you. Commissioner solis anything? I was satisfied with the explanations. I, um, Mr. Reeser, you always do a good job uh, explaining um, what needs to be explained. And if it's just that we drop all you say, we drop all, and that's what I appreciate. So thank, thank you, you Commissioner. Okay. Well, um, there being no additional questions, comments, um, and you're incorporating hearing by reference. <laughs> um, I believe, um, uh, Madam Secretary, will correct me. I, I think you uh, probably have to take the vote on number one, then you have to call number two, and I'll do the incorporation I, after you've called. I'm hoping to do them back to back without any oh, in between. I, I think only number one has been called. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's call number two. <laughs> Restricted number two is the application of WJHB LLC doing business as South 40 for a restricted gaming license. It is also the applications of Dennis Banks, Arthur Hinckley, Charles Jeans, and Kevin Jepson for licensure as a member and or manager as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Thank you. I'm sure we incorporate by reference all statements, uh, representations uh, made before the board and the commission on item two. Thank you. Um, so is there any reason why someone can't make a motion to approve <laughs> item one and item two? Hey, Chair, I, I move for approval of uh, restricted items number one and restricted item number two as read into the record by Madam Secretary and as recommended by the Gaming Control Board with the conditions as noted on the agenda. Any discussion on the motion? Right, there, being none, there being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that brings us to restricted uh, item number three. I have been notified that the applicant on restricted items uh, three, four, and five is currently stuck in traffic. He expects that he will be in the office in about the next 10 minutes, but if we would like to move to restricted number nine in the meantime. Okay. This time, uh, Madam Secretary, if you could read into the record restricted number nine. Thank you. Restricted number nine is the application of Sartini Gaming LLC doing business at Old Vegas Lounge for a restricted gaming license. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. I believe we have, we have a Zoom appearance by Ms. Gillen. Or did she think she had time? <laughs> Well, presumably she assumed there's she, three items ahead of her. She is on the Zoom uh, oh, and is? the promotion has been offered. Uh, she just has not accepted that. And I'm sorry, the ETA for uh, Mr. I'm sorry, the ETA. What'd you say? I'm sorry. 10 minutes. Ooh, Mr. Fine, it's 10 minutes. Okay. Ah, um, there we are. There is Miss Gilland. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. Um, pressing buttons and nothing was working, so I apologize. No worries. The items in front of you have uh, are asking to be delayed a couple minutes, so we're going to take you um, next. If you're ready. Yes, ready. Um, thank you very much again for the ability to uh, remote in. I appreciate it. Um, in this case, um, Sartini Gaming is asking for um, approval um, to do uh, a one-time grandfathering uh, event for Old Vegas Lounge. Uh, I'm sorry, Rush Hour 3, Inc. doing business as Old Vegas Lounge. And we request our license to provide the services to maintain the uh, state and local gaming license at the location. Um, the state lo uh, license expires approximately on 825. The Clark County expires on 830. To the, um, and the tenants um, currently 
um, are, uh, as I said, rush hour three, the landlords. Um, we want to do this uh, for the benefit of the landlords. And we would be opening for one day with food, beverage, alcohol, gaming. Um, the licenses are in place and um, would be continued as needed to be, if, if needed to be, um, under the, the requirements for keeping the location grandfathered. Um, and um, please let me know any questions you might have. Okay, thank you. Fairly straightforward. So this time, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments, oh. or does someone have a motion? The gaming ceased at this location on February 25th, 2022? Yes. Okay, and is the gaming going to resume at some point? Do you have any information about that? Um, uh, JT Moran, I believe, is in the uh, Las Vegas uh, um, uh, court, uh, Las Vegas hearing room. I don't know that question. Um, that is being worked on right now. This would give them the 24 months or keep it going during the 24 months. Uh, I'm sorry, two years and 18 months is applicable. So I, I will not speak for that landlord at this point, but I think that is absolutely the goal. Okay, thank you for clarifying. I have no um, other questions. Anyone else? No. Does anyone have a motion? I move for approval of restricted item number two is read into the record by Madam Secretary. I'm sorry, number nine is read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Game of Trouble. Is there any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have Okay. Um, good good afternoon, the... uh, Chair Tagliati. Yes. I was in the hall on item number nine. I wasn't sure if there was any questions that you had for me on that particular item. No, I think we've uh, approved it. So Terrific. under the judge Thank rule, you. you're done. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Have a good rest of the summer. Good to see you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. <laughs> right, George? Stop. <laughs> Okay. When they win, they don't keep win. talking. You move <laughs> on. <laughs> Run. <laughs> All right. Um, then in light of the fact that we don't have the folks we need on three, four, and five, paperwork five, um, we're going to move on to um, the next agenda item. Next for your consideration, you have a stipulation for settlement and order settling the complaint filed in the matter of the Nevada Gaming Control Board versus Stephen Allen Wynn, case number 19-03. Good, Good afternoon. And Madam Chair, I'm sorry. I have a, a disclosure on this one. I, I don't think I included it because it wasn't a regular matter. I also have one, so you'll okay. go first. All right. Uh, with respect to the... Uh, stipulation for settlement and order that's before us. I wanted to disclose for the record that I'm a partner in Morris Law Group and I was involved in representing Universal Entertainment Corporation, Mr. Okada and Aruze USA in appeal stemming from litigation against Wynn. Those matters concluded in early 2018. Um, and I we were involved in on the appellate side, so I'm not sure if I make that clear. Um, my firm was also rep, uh, retained to represent a former outside counsel, Jerome Coben, in a shareholder's derivative suit uh, complaint filed against the Wind Resorts and, uh, and several of its lawyers, officers, former lawyers, officers, and directors. Um, my firm's involvement was very brief, and I was not personally involved. Um, and in fact, I think, believe in a prior disclosure when you were before us before I described our former client as a shareholder or director instead of an uh, outside counsel. So I just wanted to clarify that. In any event, these representations are uh, were not material to the firm and uh, have since concluded. I don't have a pecuniary, pecuniary interest in the item before us. And I do not believe that the independence or judgment of a reasonable person in my situation would be materially affected by them. I intend to participate and vote on the settlement. Okay. Um, uh, my disclosure is on February 15, 2023, I filed a written notice of refusal uh, detailing the conflict that I had that required my recusal in this matter. I incorporate herein by reference that written recusal 
um, and therefore I will not be voting on this matter. However, I am advised by the Attorney General's office that my recusal does not limit my ability to chair this agenda item, which I intend to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the commission. Madam Secretary, I am Craig Newby, the first Assistant Attorney General for the state of Nevada, representing the Nevada Gaming Control Board in a matter read into the record by Madam Secretary. Before you today is your, for your consideration is a stipulation for settlement and order that settles the matter of Nevada Gaming Control Board versus Stephen Allen Wynn. As alleged within the original complaint, the board, after a seven month investigation, found evidence of sexual conduct by Mr. Wynn involving sub subordinate female employees. The five count complaint has four counts premise of Mr. Wynn's failure to exercise discretion and sound judgment to prevent incidents that might reflect on the repute of the state of Nevada and act as a detriment to the development of the industry pursuant to various provisions of NRS 468.170 and this commission's regulations. The fifth count was a refusal by Mr. Wynn to appear and testify at the Gaming Control Board's offices in September 2018 in accordance with Commission Regulation 5.070. This stipulation following the 2019 Wynn Company stipulation adopted by this commission would bring this sordid affair to conclusion. As set forth before you, the stipulation contains the following material terms. First, a $10 million fine, which if adopted by the commission would be the largest individual fine ever imposed and the second largest fine ever imposed by this commission. Second only to the $20 million fine associated with the stipula stipulated resolution of the related Wynn Company complaint. Second, there's an agreement by Mr. Wynn to remain entirely removed from any direct or indirect involvement, affiliation, financing, consultation, promotional advertising in any form or media or licensing agreement in the Nevada gaming industry. And third, this commission will retain jurisdiction for purposes of enforcing the stipulation should it be necessary. The board asked the commission to adopt the settlement as presented. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, I'll conclude my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Um, at this time, I would uh, ask my colleagues um, if they have any questions um, about the stipulation and comments and or comments, excuse me. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you for the concise presentation. And I had the uh, opportunity to review the stipulation for settlement and order. So it's, I have no questions. And, and Madam Chair, um, thank you for, for being in front of us. And I, I just wanna commend all the parties in a very, that's, this is a four or five year old uh, situation, um, but the, the folks on the board, previous commissions that have addressed these issues. Again, it's complicated and I'm delighted that we are in a position where all parties are apparently wishing to move forward uh, and recommending to the commission to, to accept the, the stipulation. Um, I do have a question just about the sizing of the, the, the fine, just, just for perspective and, and for the record, clearly understand it's the largest fine uh, agreed to by an individual. I understand uh, the 20 million that when corporate paid uh, you know, several years ago, I'm also aware of other jurisdictions that levied higher fines. You know, our friends in Massachusetts wanted to do uh, more, a greater amount. But are there, you know, just how did we come up to uh, in this eight-figure amount? And 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 just just for context purposes, uh, Commissioner Prolicki, uh, as part of, it was a negotiated process um, between uh, between the board. Um, Board Chair Hendrick, uh, uh, Member Assad, and uh, and with um, Mr. Wynn's counsel, uh, uh, Don Campbell and Colby Williams, who I will note for the record are are in are present here today. To the extent there's more specific questions on that, it was a negotiation between between the parties that's taken place over uh, an extended period of time, and that that is what ultimately this is where. Um, we reached agreement on um, in light of that. Okay. Well, again, I think for the benefit of the gaming industry and our role as regulators and you know, Nevada, what's before us today is a 
it's certainly welcome by me, and I, I plan to vote affirm to if that motion is made to. Any additional comments or questions? Commissioner Solis Rainey. Thank you. Um, I appreciate also the efforts of all the parties in bringing this matter to a close uh, if this settlement is approved. Um, it's it's a huge blemish on the industry. Um, while Mr. Wynn made some incredible contributions, the nature of the allegations that were made and the history behind it, I think, in my mind, warrant at least the amount of the fine that is uh, was negotiated. Uh, so I don't have a problem with the amount. Uh, and I think it is in everybody's best interest to move forward. So I, I would be in support of a settlement as well. And, and for the record, I give great deference to the board. I mean, we have a sage group of board members, including a doctor, a uh, former judge, and uh, somebody with you know, the chair with extensive experience. And I, I trust that it was heavily negotiated. And I think the the ultimate resolution that has been proposed for adoption, that's, I know it's been vetted and negotiated and everybody had advocacy on every side. So I, I give great deference to that. Um, and I appreciate you working so diligently so that we don't have to air our dirty laundry today and move forward in a positive direction. So I do appreciate your hard work on that. I'm sure it wasn't easy. Commissioner Mark Antonis, any questions or comments? Chair, I did know my fellow commissioners' comments. Okay. Um, at this time, um, does anyone have a motion? <laughs> Madam Chair, I do. I would move that this commission approve the stipulation for settlement and order NGC case number 19-03. Is the terminology adopt? To adopt. Let's ask the AG. Use adopt or approve? Accept. Thank you. Accept. Got so, gaming commission would accept the stipulation for settlement as I just described. Any discussion on the motion? Thank you for your hard work. I'm sorry. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 I'm not voting. I am not voting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. So the record just so reflect. And all uh, of the votes were in favor and I abstained. So do we have the parties we need on restricted items number three, four, and five? I believe he has arrived to the Vegas office. Mr. Fine? Yes. Hi. Uh, good morning, and I, I apologize. Um, I was watching, I have a newborn, and I was watching on uh, on the computer, and when there was no lunch break, I hopped in my car and came down as fast as I could. I apologize that uh, that I was late. I thought there was going to be a, a break like on, on the commission. So thank you. Uh, thank you for... Uh, Pushing this back. No problem. Um, so, did we actually read it in yet? We did not. Okay. So, what we're going to do, and I watched the meeting. I remember the details of the meeting, but I cannot remember. They were read separately and voted on separately and heard separately, correct? Okay. So, if we could start with, um, I just wanted to confirm restricted item number three. Restricted number three is the application of Boulevard Water LLC doing business as Boulevard Grill for restricted gaming license, as well as the applications of Jonathan Fine and Parkway Management LLC for licensure as a member or manager as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Okay, uh, thank you for being uh, here in, well, in Las Vegas at the meeting. Um, and we um, appreciate that sometimes these things happen. Um, and we on the commission don't know what lunch is. <laughs> Sometimes it's dinner. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're happy to have you here. Um, you know, we, we do have the benefit of watching the board proceedings and or reading uh, the board proceedings. And so we are familiar with these items, but we always want to hear from you. Uh, we're glad to see you and have you here today. And congratulations, by the way. Thank you. He's uh, he's 30 days. It's one month today. Yeah. 
well, you kind of look like you have a 30 day, <laughs> a 30 day year old baby. <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way. But it's a, it's a, it's a slightly haunted look in your eye that I, I, re I remember years ago. Um, so what would you like to tell us? Um, one, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the consideration for the applications. Um, we are opening up a new concept on Water Street. Um, we bought a building. We did uh, about a million dollars in rehab on a historic district. Um, we're doing a, a high-end, more fine dining restaurant with uh, gaming as an urban lounge. That's um, the Boulevard Grill. Um, the second one is a Parkway Tavern which uh, we've now, this will be the seventh uh, Parkway Tavern. Uh, that is on Water Street as well, across from Lifeguard Stadium in the Watermark Hotel. And we are buying a restaurant on Centennial Drive um, that will also be a Parkway Tavern. Uh, it was the existing Fire Rock. And uh, we're excited for the projects and uh, you know, you know, looking for, uh, for your approval. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any questions or comments um, for Mr. Fine? Um, congratulations. Yes, I, I would like to add my congratulations, Mr. Fine. That's just wonderful news. Thank you. <laughs> Please uh, wish Katie all the best and I hope she's doing well and congratulations on the baby. Can you tell me when is the opening scheduled for Boulevard Grill, sir? A Boulevard Grill, the opening um, with or without gaming approvals tonight. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's exciting. And what's the occupancy for the dining area versus the two bars? Um, so the dining area uh, as it's today is about 98 seats. We have room for four or five more tables. Um, there is a bar that has 11 seats at it and a bar that has 10 seats at it. Uh, one of them is raised, a raised area. And um, there's five machines on the raised area and there are 10 machines in the lower area. Um, and then there's a small lounge that's an urban lounge. So we have live music six nights a week. And do you have anybody performing this evening or is it a soft opening? Uh, we've had people performing just to see how the sound and the audio and video work together. So we have people performing, uh, I think, seven nights we have we have programming as of now. Wonderful. And who is on the compliance committee and who oversees the committee? Um, I oversee the committee. Um, the committee is made up of uh, Vanessa, who's my head of compliance, uh, Bill Winklered, who is my controller, uh, uh, Todd and um, I believe Kenna Warner is on it as well. Okay, well, congratulations on we order. Could. Thank you. I think I think Cassandra Lupo. I think we took off of it because I don't. I think okay. that she was too close to my dealings um, with all of my stuff, so she can be kind of an outsider looking in on the compliance. Well, thank you for being thoughtful about that. I think it's very important that you're focused on that to make sure that you don't have any issues going forward. But no, congratulations are in order on the home front and opening tonight and I'm very excited to see how everything turns out. I'm sure it will be a huge success. Thank you. Thank I have you no further much. questions or no areas of concern. Commissioner Solis Rainey. Uh, Mr. Pine, thank you for being with us and congratulations on the uh, new addition. And I just wanted to say I'm super excited to have these new properties in Henderson. There's a lot of fun things happening on Water Street and as a longtime resident. Uh, it's just, it's nice to have more options. So uh, thank you for that. And I also wanted to just thank you for your slide presentation. That was really helpful in kind of visualizing what you were doing. I mean, it's nice hearing about it, but um, that type of presentation was very helpful to me. So thank you. I don't have any further questions. I agree on the presentation comment. I just made that um, statement to an earlier licensee or applicant slash now licensee. Um, and so we thank you for being here today. I'm just going to ask Commissioner Kralicki if he has anything else to add. You know, you can't let a new baby go, you know, ununanimously recognized. So <laughs> boy or girl? It's a boy. Uh, Elliot Ike. Um, Katie's uh, grandfather was Ike. Uh, and her father is Erwin Kenneth Epstein, which is uh, initial spell Ike. And her older brother, Lawrence, is also, uh, his first name is Ike. So. 
It's a family oh, that's name. Wonderful. Dan, we, we uh, <laughs> you've got a lot going on in your world. Yeah. Uh, the parents here who, you know, they're up and out of the house. <laughs> We're just enjoying your 30 day of fatherhood, this go around. So, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> find some sleep somewhere, but between opening new properties and, and babies, that's going to be hard. You, you can sleep next year. No, I'm, I'm not. I try, I try, and, I try and plan everything around the same time. So I'm busy all the same time. <laughs> And uh, being a former longtime resident of, of Henderson, in addition to Douglas County, Nevada, you know, it, it is always a pleasure to see these kind of properties open up. So well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, so we, we did take each of your items one at a time. So at this time, I'm going to ask, does anyone have a motion on restricted item number three? I move for approval of restricted item number three is read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Game Control, Game Control Board. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Okay, thank you. On uh, Madam Secretary, if you could please read in restricted number four. Restricted number four is the application of Parkway Water LLC doing business as Parkway Tavern for restricted gaming license, as well as the applications of Jonathan Fine and Parkway Management LLC for licensure as a member or manager as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. So do you have uh, any anything you'd like to say on this agenda item at this moment, Mr. Fine? No, I, everything was, all my comments were, were grouped together. Perfect. Uh, does anybody have any comments or questions on this particular um, location? I have no questions. further comment. All right. Does anyone have a motion? Sure. I move for approval of non -restric of restricted number four, um, as read into the record by Madam Secretary and recommended by the Gaming Control Board and noting the conditions as uh, read into the record and on the agenda. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Madam Secretary, if you could please read in restricted number five. Restricted number five is the application of Parkway Centennial LLC doing business as Parkway Tavern for a restricted gaming license, as well as the applications of Jonathan Fine and Parkway Management LLC for licensure as a member or manager as noted on the agenda. The recommendation of the Gaming Control Board is for approval with conditions as noted on the agenda. Mr. Fine, you're submitting it on your previous comments, correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, is there, uh, does anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, is there a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion. Madam Chair, I vote for approval of non-restricted item number, sorry, of restricted item number five, as read into the record by Madam Secretary and as recommended by the Gaming Control Board, including with the conditions. Thank okay. you. Commissioner Mark Antonis has made a motion to approve. Um, any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 And there are none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Fine. Good luck with the baby. Thank you very much. And again, I apologize. Thank you. So thank you for your time. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, at this time, uh, next on our agenda are the administrative reports. If we could hear from Chair Hendrick, anything he wants us to know. Thank you, Chair Togliati. Uh, only item we have is the board's next meeting will be in Las Vegas on August 9th. We will have nine non-restricted items that start at 9 a.m. and 13 restricted items at 11.30. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything from our attorney general today? All right. Can, Madam Chair, can I just ask sure. Chair Hendrick about the recent softball game within the Gaming Control Board that was so wickedly played out in the heat of Carson City and you know how we, how we batted and fielded. Oh, my team lost. So, uh, <laughs> Just wanted to get that on the record. Sore subject that we don't need on the record. Thank you for bringing it back up. Always good to have salt thrown in those wounds. Thank you. All right, Madam uh, Secretary, um, if we could uh, please close our last agenda. I close with our last agenda item: public comments. This item is placed on the agenda to give the public an opportunity to comment on gaming-related matters. One, one matter. One minute. Um, I will. One minute. Chairman Tagliari, Corey Bailey. Yeah, one minute. Member Public Incorporated. Hang on. Oh, wait, oh, wait, one wait. please wait. One minute. Sorry. I'm going to go to Las Vegas first. We always go to the remote location first. So when we're, when we're in the south, we go to the north. When we're in the north, we go to the south. And then I will uh, have you state your name for the record, okay? 
So um, at this time, I'm going to go to Las Vegas, where it does not appear that anyone's standing at the podium to make uh, a comment or, or uh, public comment. Anyone present in Las Vegas to make public comment? There appearing to be no one. Now here back in Carson City. Sir, please state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Corey Bailey. Uh, I'm with Met Republic Incorporated from Minnesota. I'm here on behalf of- Mr. Bailey, of can I interrupt you for a second? Yes. Have you been here since the beginning of the meeting? Yes, I have. Okay, so you heard the commentary about how public comment works? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, you have three minutes and it doesn't start till you until your next sentence. <laughs> okay, that's, okay, that's where I thought you were giving me one minute earlier. And so, no, I'm giving you three. Yeah, okay, thank you, Chairwoman. Steve Wynn has been the victim of data theft, and uh, this is wire fraud. That's that's what this is all about, this uh, sexual assault scandal that's been going on, and that was just presented to you with four women that they found. There's been no jury trial. There's, you know, there's no trial. Um, it's all about data theft. And I, I was really surprised when I got here this morning and I saw this article in... Uh, Nevada Gaming Lawyer, Nevada permits out-of-state hosting centers and regulates cloud computing. Now, regulating cloud computing is, it's not possible. That's not how com computers are networked together. And there's no, there's no cloud in computing. This whole industry, I, let, here, here's an example. I registered uh, with Win, Win, Win Resorts on Tuesday uh, with a, the uh, the Win Rewards Club. I logged into my account and it's hosted out in Massachusetts, which means that the data that I put in my account at Win Res Win Las Vegas is stored in Austin. Essentially, it's probably where it is. This is uh, Steve Win has been the victim of wire fraud all, right from the beginning. I've, I've looked at his uh, Aaron account there. The Wynn Resorts uh, is, was registered as Autonomous System 26 or 26671 in the year 2010. And uh, this is something I, I don't see anywhere is Autonomous Systems here in Nevada. The, 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 the gaming industry is, is uh, it's literally hijacked already. It's it's out of it's uh, out of control. I mean the 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 computer networks that we're is what I'm talking about. We uh, IP address assignments, the router routing of information. We don't have control of it. There's no state agency that controls IP address assignments or autonomous system numbers, which uh, my company, Met Resorts Incorporated, has a casino license for the state of Minnesota. I was going to present a plan to Steve Wynn in 2017, and things happened. This article came out that saying he was a sexual predator on January 27th, 2018. Uh, everything fell apart after that. It, he was going to be the guy that ran the resort in Minnesota. Minnesota, or Win Minnesota, or Win Resort in Minnesota. And everything fell apart after this uh, Wall Street Journal article. And now, here today, we, we I just saw that there's a $10 million fine being imposed on him for something that hasn't been proven in court. Oh, so I have to interrupt you. Yeah. Because you've, you've hit that three minute sure. plus mark. If you want to end with one sentence, um, you can. Otherwise, because I have to treat everybody similarly situated the same, right? So um, one sentence. Steve Wynn is a victim. He's, he's the ultimate victim in, in this. And, uh, it's my fault, actually, because I, I, I've got a Minnesota gaming license, and uh, he was going to be the, the guy to run the casino. So. Well, I appreciate your patience and making public comments at the end. Thank you. All right. It appears that there being no other public comment, go ahead. Can I make just, just a quick comment? 
Sure. I just wanted to thank Ter- Hendrix for always just troubleshooting all the little problems we have. We really appreciate it. I mean, you've jumped right in and uh, have been helpful in every way. So thank yeah. you. Two quick comments. Thank you for that. And that's the AV group jumped on that. So I appreciate the IT guys trying to figure it out. I will tell you that the budgetary issue is the reason why that mic doesn't work, but we did get from the last legislature more money for the AV in this room, as well as in Las Vegas. So we will be able to fix that problem, hopefully by the time the commission's back up here again. And then quickly, since Commissioner Perlicki brought up uh, my softball skills, I I do want to thank all of the board agents and board employees who came out and uh, played in a game. It just shows the camaraderie of everybody who works here and makes it a pleasure to be with everybody. Uh, Mr. Rippey put most of that together, also hit an in-the-park home run, so congratulations to him and everybody who came out. A whole lot of fun and was glad to be part of it, so thank you for that. Thank you. Public comment by me, if I may? Sure. Um, I've been serving on this commission for a few years now, and it is a delight to finally come up north and sit with everybody, and everybody's been very gracious and hospitable, so thank you. And then another public comment, today is my sister's birthday and my mother-in-law's birthday, so happy birthday, Alina and Sharon. That's all. Thank you. Public birthday wishes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> So at uh, this time, then, it appears that concludes the July meeting of the Nevada Gaming Commission. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the recycling? Yes, that is it.